Hey, it's nice to see everybody here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about Nolf, bringing on some of the original devs. We have right now Mr. Kevin Steffens. Hey! So, uh, hello everyone. We've been reading you guys in chat as well. It's been super fun to see, like, um, oh man, how do you say your name? ACDF. That's, that's how I'll say your name for now. Uh, the story about your aunt and owning Nolf and stuff, that was really cute. That was really fun to have. But uh, I wonder if they'll explain how they got it to run. <laughs> Yes, actually, <laughs> I can talk about that. Um, it's a, it's in fact, it's a, if you type, it's a Kotaku article that writes about um, a, a fan set of mods that make it run, and so we have Nolf One and Nolf Two supported that way. But uh, hello, I'll just start saying hello to people. Feel free, Kevin, to jump in. And oh say, sure, hello, hello everybody, hello Dracu, hello I, Josh Brown. See, I'm old. I can barely read the names. <laughs> I could try to make him bigger if, if need be. No, that's good. All right. We'll just have fun with it. Tugalaw, nice to see you. G Spectra, always Dead appreciated. Cowboy boy death. <laughs> Dead cowboy death. I'm going to see if I can nice. find that one. Oh, yeah. I can't read that. It's It appears to be Russian. Yeah, it looks like Russian. Can I, DX, nice to have you. Let's see. XPS 90. Oh, you're, that's not fair. You're going on the bottom. Alpha Wolf <laughs> Nation. Josh Brown. I, I can say that yeah. one. Way to go, Josh Brown. Yeah, thank you. Way to have a normal name. <laughs> Little Rudy. That's not, that's, that's not bad. Yeah. Kabu is exposing Alex. Thank you. So what are they asking? Uh, we have hellos. We have the memories of Shadow of War coming out of this shirt. Oh, yeah, for the shirt. <laughs> and see, these mods are absolutely essential. The other mod uh, only runs in a 3x4 screen instead of a widescreen. So uh, we'll just have fun with that. Yeah, hey. You can blame the engineers. Blame the engineers. That's a way to do. I'm fully jumping in. Yeah, feel free, Mark. Come on, in, Mark. Woohoo, yeah. Yay, Mark. Oh. Got the what is Nolf? My booty just didn't <laughs> What is Nolf? No one lives forever. You can't be told what Nolf is. That's right. <laughs> you, just, you must just simply experience. <laughs> you just must know what Nolf is. It sounds like it's a familiar game. Oh, Jared, can I can I tell everybody the really exciting yeah, yeah, news? Yeah, go for it. Uh -oh. That at some point today. Woo. Nice. That's right. We're going to be giving these away. Maybe, maybe if you want, we'll even have some of the guys sign them. We won't be signing them, Jared. <laughs> you can get like three signatures because we don't work here anymore. <laughs> so you can sign it as large as you went to. Yeah, I'll and just sign one. a letter on each one. All right, who do we got? I, I know DX did say he's going to be in the house. How he else said he's going to be here? All right, all right. So Spectra. we'll hold it, throw it in the corner ourselves <laughs> since we live down here. Uh, hey, really? How dare they not prepare for decades of hardware? And for, I like that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> what he said or she said. Indeed. All right, let's go ahead and uh, make sure it's... As, as we're doing this, so everybody's been asking us, Kevin, and I think you want to make a big announcement, that we are, in fact, remap. Just kidding. Oh, my <laughs> we're, God. We're not <laughs> actually remastering. It's, I can no see the article now. I know. <laughs> I'm breaking the news here. Mark promised. Mark's doing it. <laughs> Mark's, uh, Mark alone. Yeah, pixel by <laughs> pixel. <laughs> Unfortunately, not as many pixels as it would be today. We've but. been contacted All right, by so Dr. Otto we'll, be, we'll begin with some, a briefing. Mm -hmm. who we believe is working on a top uh, it's been a long time since I've played No One Lives Forever. Dr. Schenker has Just FYI. a desire to defect. He has It'll asked us back. to assist him in exchange for information on his so, research. This I have a question just straight out the gate. How, sure. how hot on the heels of um, Shogo and Blood is this? Yeah, so the team, the core leads team uh, that made Shogo made No One Was Forever. I think that's pretty well documented. Um, so we actually, we kind of went, we went from Shogo and then we went through this process of kind of figuring out what our next project was. And so right after Shogo, we actually started working on what we called, uh, a, it was a power armor game, actually. Mm. It, was, it was smaller mechs. We used to say it was like mechs, <laughs> mechs in office buildings. That was kind of our, uh -huh. our thing. So um, I think, you know, if you just picture, you know, just power armor suits instead of, you know, 30 feet tall mechs or however big they are in Shogo. Uh, so that's kind of where we we started going, and that and we kind of did you know early concept on that for a couple months, uh, and then we kind of kind of took a step back and said, well, let's let's start over from scratch, and our whole process, which was actually really the same process, this leads group. I worked with this leads group on No One List Forever, actually Shogo, No One List Forever, No One List Forever Two, and Fear was all the same kind of leads groups. So we had kind of actually the same process in all the games which was we would start with the concept of action movie. That's what we would call it internally. 
Uh, and even I think one of the games that was the code name was Action Movie. Oh, that's and cool. So yeah, so we would we'd basically, and it's, it sounds really generic, but this is what we do at the time. It's like, okay, we're making a first person shooter. Uh, let's start with action movie. So we're basically making an action movie. And so what action movie are we making? And with No One Lives Forever, we actually said, and this was the first time we had done this. We didn't mm-hmm. do this on Shogo. We said, okay, well, let's just start with all the coolest action scenes we can think of. <laughs> so at the time, you gotta go back in time. This is, you know, 1998 into 1999. Uh, you know, Die Hard was one of our big f- movies that we thought was awesome. So we, we, I remember talking a lot about the idea of, uh, you know, some of the scenes where, you know, John McClane's running through, like, broken glass. Yes. And you're just, like, shooting up the glass. Yes. And there's bullets we flying. And it's, the glass. And it's, yeah, and it's, in, and it's in an office building where, you know, now this sounds really cliche, but at the time, that was really a, a kind of a new location for an action experience. Like having like a, a traditional office building get kind of shot up was mm-hmm. not normal. Right. So we were like, well, let's look for scenes like that. So we started dissecting action movies and very quickly we kind of fell into dissecting the James Bond movies. And just in the more we kind of watched the James Bond movies, I think Craig Hubbard, who uh, you know is a creative director, and I, you know, we we both, and I'm sure a lot of people on the team, but me and him, we had a lot of. I remember talking with him about it a lot. We both had this affinity for James Bond. We both yeah. grew up with James Bond. We just, you know, and just the more movies we watched, the more we kind of both just reminded ourselves of like, holy crap, James Bond is awesome. And you know, so then then it kind of you know started. We just started to focus and go well. Let's let's make our character a spy because remember we started with like scenes like literally yeah. like from almost a level design <laughs> standpoint of like what would be a cool action moment right and then we didn't have we didn't know what the character was we didn't know anything um, and so you know the more we did this then we started like you know latching onto these 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 moments and one of the moments was like the plane moment came really early. Uh, the idea that would be this moment, yeah this, yeah, this moment this great, yeah yeah so this this, this scene, idea this level is still talked about to this day is being just like such a cool moment yeah this was one where we just were like you know it would be awesome uh, I don't remember which James Bond movie um, probably a bunch at this point oh, but God, yeah. where he, you know he fell out of the sky right, and, right. you know he's it's it's one of the old Roger Moore ones I think is where we first originally were thinking of or was probably the I don't remember but um, but yeah, this whole this whole level was kind of built around the end of the level. The whole idea that you're going to be like falling, and you're going to be fighting as you fall, and you're going to keep your cool, and you know you're going to be able to survive it. And so that that was that was you know before we even knew who the character was, before we even knew what the story was, we had the concept for this this level. That's really cool. That's like a lot of for modelist games, even in the future. I know you guys were talking about with Fear and John Woo was like a really big influence as well. Yeah, things. yeah. I mean, yeah. The well, actually, the interesting thing with John Woo. I see your question. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm no, no, no. It's okay. I would hear. I asked you that. I, I know. I just let yeah. These the guys John Woo. I mean, the, the thing with John Woo is that it was the the kind of guns akimbo is what we'd call it. Yeah. It's like the double guns. So I feel like back in the '90s, that you know, is, and again, I'm sure there's somebody like you know, everything's recycled. So I'm sure if you go back far enough in you know cinema history, you'd find somebody with two guns. But um, you know, if back at least in the '90s, it was kind of the John Woo movies were was the first time the action movies guys had like, two guns. Yeah. And so that you know, that whole approach was we just call it Kimbo or John Woo or whatever. Uh, yeah. This is all coming back. The orange. <laughs> it's all about the orange. Oh, the orange. Cyanide <laughs> the Lizard asks, uh, I was always curious, oh, what inspirational differences there were after, uh-oh, can we go back in time? Can we go back, back in time? time? <laughs> Sorry, we, Cyanide, we lost the, the first question. Lost the question. Oh. <laughs> and I, I, scroll up, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah scroll up. Oh, like, right back there. in time. Mr. Hubbard talked about shows inspired Nolf. What, what inspirational differences were there for Nolf after Kate Archer was introduced? I think meaning from uh, Adam Church in the original. Yeah, um... Well, obviously, I think that we start, I was actually talking to Mark about this earlier, uh, some of the, obviously, the fashion, trying to figure out, like, what is our, what does Kate look like, and what is, I mean, this was, David Longo was the art director, um, and so, I mean, he's actually a better person to ask, but he's not around. Um, so, I mean, he, you know, they, we looked at a lot of different movies. I mean, you know, Massey Blaze was a movie that I remember looked at. A lot of this is online, uh, as far as the, you know, kind of the influences. I think that the truth is, when it was Adam Church, was so early that he was really pretty generic. Like we had the idea that he was, you know, very Bond-like. 
you know, and so we didn't, it was, you know, he had a British accent and it was a dude. And that was kind of all that had really been worked out for him. Uh, by the time we, you know, we got to the point where we had to change directions. And so really, Kate was the one that we focused the energy on of concepting as a character. And so there wasn't, it wasn't really like we had to change directions. It's more like, oh, now we have a clear direction. And let's go in a direction of, you know, having a female super spy. The things I remember, and this was all, you know, this is really David Longo and Craig. And I was the engineer, so I wasn't in, in a lot of these conversations. Conversations, but um, I do remember that you know her being her being this you know this woman in a man's world and and just still and basically being more competent than every man was very intentional um, and I think Craig was really it was really important to Craig that um, you know that she she was inspiring to anybody like there there no it wouldn't be this thing where like oh women so find her inspiring it's like no men flight. find her inspiring mm -hmm. like everybody finds her inspiring and um and you know we tried as much as uh, as possible not to fall into cliche things of like her being in duress and um, you know uh, just a man coming to save her so we you know, did, you know, there was a lot of trying to flip that on its head um, but that really comes through I mean it really does that's all Craig really I mean Craig Craig you know I can't emphasize enough how much you know Craig really you know thought about that stuff the same with a lot of the dialogue and the um <laughs> the other thing i remember that craig was really big on was the um and i don't know if you're gonna do this in a different scene but he's really big on the um, bureaucracy of harm like that was big like he, he he had he got a lot of joy in making that a very kill you know a, a, a huge bureaucracy and the irony of that is at the time that craig was doing that Monolith was super independent, and yeah. we had like no bureaucracy. And then now it's like you know we're part of Time Warner and AT and T, and I guess not Time Warner anymore, Warner Media and AT and T. So it is kind of irony. It is uh, funny. He's got Craig has these signature writing moments where he just goes on these huge deep diatribes about yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, just classic. Yeah, he had he had fun with that. He was he was he's a great writer. Yeah, that was his, that was his signature for sure. So Sorry, for, I went all over the place. No, no. Oh, it's, it's, for those of you who are listening at home, oh, it's, you gotta get that machine gun and I, die. For those of you listening at home, <laughs> we were uh, we were on an airplane, or we're still on an airplane, but it's crashing. They've yeah. killed everybody on the plane, and so now we're trying to you escape. You can tell it's crashing. Look at that screen shake. Yeah, yeah, I mean, of course that. it's crashing. Yeah. Like, you, what else could be happening? You look out the window, and you can definitely see there's clearly rapidly increasing. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think if you look out and look at the engines, I think one of the engines is smoking, if I remember Let's correctly. see if we can get a view of the engine. I could be wrong, but my memory is that one of the, one of the engines is smoking. How can you see clearly, though? It's such a challenge. Oh, the hockey rink. Do you remember that, Kevin? The North multiplayer map that had the hockey rink? I do. Oh, here we go. I do. There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> How big was the multiplayer? Oh, you didn't get off the plane. I, I died. Oh, you Failed. got it because it's a time thing. It's a time thing. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll run a little faster. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a great line in, in uh, which I'm not to spoil them see coming up, but there's a lot of great stuff in it. But where, where uh, Tom Goodman says, oh, so it's women to live about just girls wanting to be guys? And she says, I think it's about girls being whatever they want to be. And you think about it, like that line that was like 18 years ago in video games, that was kind of ahead of its time to even like come up into that kind of material. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I mean, trying to think of, like, other heroes Yeah, I mean, the big thing... Like well, that. I mean, I think Tomb Raider was kind of the, the big, yeah. you know, kind of at the... You know, that we talked about a lot. But she was, she was very independent, but I think that... Um, I mean, the truth is, it's kind of the shooter. Back, back at the time that this game came out, the context really was, like, Doom and Quake and Unreal. Um, there was a game... Uh, Basically, everything was very much Duke Nukem. Mm -hmm. It was all like very masculine mm -hmm. and just you know, it's it's like it's like Rambo, it's like Commando, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger basically running around, uh, which was super fun. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but um, you know, this was definitely different. <laughs> this was definitely not yeah. the same vibe as far as uh, you know the uh, the hero, the protagonist of the story. I think that, yeah, that's something that I remember just being a fan and a gamer back then that immediately leapt out at me. That it's like, oh wow, that's really cool. I even do remember being like, what's your female protagonist? That's cool. So Cyanide's asking about the leap into a far bigger, more expansive title. Um, I think that, I mean, 
the finding a publisher for No Limits Forever was really at the beginning of the project. I mean, Fox came on pretty early, like it, it, so. It wasn't it wasn't that challenging. Um, I think that as far as Expanse, I mean, all the games we did back then were just as much as we could do with the time and the money we had, and so it wasn't so much. You know, it was it was much more. We'll make the game as good as we can with the constraints we have. Not not that here's the you know design of the game and it's going to be this big giant huge game. Then we got to go find somebody to publish that. Like it didn't really work that way back then. That's not that's not how it worked. Um, so you know, really, you know, Lone was forever being kind of I guess you know bigger, more expansive. However, you know, I guess you view it relative to something like Shogo was I think a combination of a more seasoned team that worked together, um, you know, technology that was more robust, you know, we'd ship titles with it. Yeah. Um, and in some ways, I think doing, you know, a real world game and, you know, one that we, you know, we took a lot of cues from, you know, all the James Bond movies and, you know, there's lots of references. It, it speeds up development because you're not, you're not making everything up from scratch. You can, you know, lean on cliches um, and, you know, it was. I think that the the whole game came to, together. I think as far as where we're going, what locations we're having, uh, kind of what the missions are going to be, uh, a lot easier than my memory on Shogo. Shogo, it felt a lot more. It, it wasn't as organized, um, and I think a lot of that came from having a, a, a core group of uh, leads all in place at the beginning of uh, No One Lives Forever. All, you know, everybody coming from Shogo. I think helped a lot in that. So I don't know if that answers the question. But. Hopefully, because, yeah, it was like, still to this day, I think it is incredible, like, how many, we were talking about this, we were playing. Oh, I got to ask you that question. Oh, yeah, sorry. sorry. Somebody's asking work. about, I just saw, in retrospective, what is your feelings on the stat leveling up in Nolf 2? <laughs> I'm actually glad you asked about that, because I pushed really hard for that. So, back back in the beginning yes. of knowing this Forever 2, uh, you know, one of, the, one of my favorite games of all time, and uh, one of Craig Hubbard's favorite games of all time, was Diablo. And so, I was very much trying to push RPG elements into the game, uh, you know, back even before I really understood what RPG elements were. <laughs> I just liked the leveling up in Diablo. And We've so, you know, Craig was like, yeah, Dr. sure, let's Arthur try that. Shaker. And so, and I was, I championed a lot of those stats. And I don't think they were, like, great like I don't you know like I said I didn't really understand balance or you know any of that kind of stuff so for me it was more um, you know just kind of you know winging it <laughs> on on the idea but it's but if you look at it now every game has that like every game has those kind of RPG you know kind of growth yeah. elements the progress uh, so I actually you know personally feel like we were a little bit ahead of the curve on that uh, even if we didn't really execute it at a level that was like, you know, <laughs> revolutionary, it was more, you know, it's more the thought that counts. <laughs> right. That's the way I like to think about it. So, uh, thanks for asking that question. Yeah, that is a very really cool question. What was, uh, any cool gadgets that didn't adult. make the cut that you can recall? Oh, uh, I'm sure there are. The problem is it has been so long since I have really spent energy thinking about this. <laughs> right. I'm not probably going to remember what's in and what's out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I only remember the stuff that we kind of ended up having in. Um, we talked about lots of stuff, though. I mean, we, we had lots of crazy ideas. I mean, the biggest reason we would cut gadgets um, or we, you know, they go into concepts is we just couldn't find enough gameplay reasons for them. We, mm -hmm. we tried to avoid the one-offs. I think we had a couple gadgets we didn't use very much, um, but we tried to avoid that. I have it, yeah. it, an interruption real quick. This is no, some no, of the, fine. my favorite lines that I've heard so far in playing with the game. So right now we're doing a domino effect where we have oh, a bunch yes. of spies who have information that we don't have time. Like, they don't know the full story, but once we get all the pieces, we know the full story. But the code words are always commented on. Do you make love to strangers? <laughs> Certainly not. Then allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> Why not just introduce line. yourself to a police officer and spare me the trouble? And then... Who makes up these ghastly code phrases, anyway? Someone in the cryptography department. Someone in need of a girlfriend, <laughs> apparently. What do you have for me? Just this. The entrance is hidden. Thank you. Good luck. Oh, the stats felt like cash resolution. Thanks! Yeah. <laughs> I thought so, too. They made sense to me. And then... Hello. Are you free tonight? Or will it cost me? <laughs> more than you can afford. <laughs> why must I be made to say such idiotic things? It's just as full of like, why? Just yeah. tell me what you have. I was told to say, 
in the basement. Thank you. Tell the person who wrote the code press to grow up. Craig is great. Craig is one of the best comedic writers, in my opinion. I mean, uh, almost all of that. I mean, obviously there was people had ideas, and you know, it wasn't like he he did it all 100 percent by himself. But I'd say the majority, the best lines were pretty much pure Craig Hubbard, gold golden. So it's really there's not that many truly classic humor games that stand on their own as gameplay as well as humor. I like actually thinking like I loved Bard's Tale. I think that's one. But like truly game games that are truly funny and over then over also great car. games. That's a pretty rare category. <laughs> Thanks. Somebody asked about uh, the language. It's, it was C++. If uh, FBL joined join us, join us later, I'm sure he would be able to deconstruct some of the code. He probably actually found some of the gadgets in the code already and would be able to... And there's another person, Maddie, who I don't think can make the stream today because he's living in England, but he's got the AI working in such a way that he's got some new multiplayer hmm. uh, it says, of the library. map working in some new multiplayer mode as That's of cool. like now. Isn't that crazy? Nobody's home. So uh, this is pretty much public information, so I'll answer the question about dropping Adam Church. That was, uh, we were actually sent a cease and desist letter from MGM uh, that told us uh, Adam Church is too close to James Bond. Um, and, you know, at the time, you got to remember, this was, you know, uh, Monolith was an independent studio. Uh, we weren't very big. We didn't have a lot of money to fight, you know, legal cases. And um, also, you know, Fox Interactive, our publisher, you know, was part of Fox. And so they didn't want to get into, you know, some kind of legal battle with uh, a movie studio with MGM. So, you know, we just started brainstorming. And it was, I believe, I wasn't in the room when the idea for Kate came up, but um, my understanding is that Samantha Ryan, who is the producer, uh, who runs like half of development at EA now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, uh, look her up, she's, she's awesome. Um, she, her and Craig were talking about the, the problem. And, um, you know, they, I don't know if it was Samantha's idea. I don't know if it was Craig's idea. It was, I don't know if it's one of those, you know, things that they came to at the same time. But they basically came up with the idea of like, well, what if we switched to a woman lead? Obviously, we can't be sued for being too close to James Bond. Um, and so that's kind of what drove us in the, in the direction of Kate Archer. Uh, the other thing is the name. I actually, you know, a lot of times developers like to say the publisher adds no value. Uh, Kate Archer was actually came from the publisher. They came up with the name Kate Archer. Um, I don't remember who with the publisher. It might have been Chris Miller, who was our publishing producer. Um, it might have been somebody else. I honestly don't way, remember. I am supposed to tell you this. That's really interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that. I, you, you know what's Thanks. funny? Have you ever seen the show Archer? The current yep. Show? yep. Do you Even think that the there's any? I mean, it's just prognostic so projection. But we've had other people ask us if that has. Any yeah. I. I mean, obviously, uh, I think the ego anybody who worked on No One Knows Forever was to believe that they copied us. But I'm sure they just copied the same things that we looked at. I mean, they looked back at the '60s. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's, my guess is somebody associated with the creation of that show has seen No One Was Forever, uh -huh. but my guess is it's probably one of many references, um, and they likely went back to the, the original things we referenced yeah. actually from the 60s. I think it's, I think it's better to go back to the original, you know, cause then, cause you know, we have our flavor on it. Yeah. And if you start to think oh, your version of the 60s is, is accurate, then you're going to miss things. Yeah. Um, and so... It's like a stylized version of... Like, an Austin Powers also had that kind of... Yeah. To, to. Yeah, that's another one that a lot of people ask about. Um, I don't know if anybody asked about that, but we, we were working on No One Lives Forever as a female spy set in the 60s with our comic flavor before Austin Powers came out. When Austin Powers came out, we had really mixed emotions. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah? Yeah, because we... Part of, I mean, we all, in general, people liked it. Like, there was nobody that was like, oh, this is, you know, this, this movie's bad. But I think that we were kind of like, well, they kind of beat us to the punch a little bit, is what it felt like. Uh-huh. Um, oh, that's what I was wondering. So you guys didn't see Austin Powers. No. We're having some, we're having uh, no. Brian and Nathan are coming in here to join us momentarily. That is crazy. Yeah, but obviously, once it came out, and it was such a big phenomenon at the time, 
it influenced us. Oh, like it was, yeah. it, it's not that it, it's not that we just ignore, you know, we were working in a vacuum. Uh, it's just that we didn't, I think a lot of people think, oh, you copied that. It's like, no, we were, we were, it's just, you know, yeah. kismet or whatever. It's like, we were yeah. thinking, it was like one of those cultural moments where we were thinking about doing something and working on it. Yes. And then they released before we released. And then we were like, oh, the thing it did help though, actually, is our publisher. It made our publisher get more excited about because the idea. Because they thought that, that yeah. cultural lift was yeah. going to take they place. Saw that, they saw it was, that they could market it and, and have success. Um, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But right. it definitely, definitely the fla- their, their, their how sure of the product they were became a lot. It became a lot easier for them to convince other management. Yeah, because it was in the zeitgeist. Yeah, it was in the zeitgeist, exactly. Oh, it, was, it wasn't like, oh, picture this thing set in the 60s. It's funny. It's yeah. like, well, look at Austin Powers. It's like that, but right. with a female lead. Is kind That's of, pretty cool. I and think, actually, they had a great female lead, and I'm going to forget her name now, but the, the model. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Hurley. Yeah, yeah. Right? Who kind of felt like Kate Archer. Speaking of which, somebody had asked earlier. I think that was all saying, coincidence. That, that really? That's, yeah. that's so great. Which I know no one probably believes, but. No, no, even because like <laughs> even when we were just playing right before this stream, I asked Jared, I'm like, you think this character was inspired by Fat Bastard or the Scotsman? I can't remember. Really. Uh, just the, had him. the plane one. Yes. Yeah, the guy on the plane. Yeah. Wow. No, that's that's totally yeah. cool. You heard it here first, folks. It's, we're trying to figure that out. Speaking of which, somebody asked earlier about Mitzi Martin. So how, how did that come about that she was cast to be? So that was all Archer? done on the publishing side. And and to be honest, we we weren't fans of her. I mean, not her as a person or her as an actress or anything. But if you look at if you look at Kate in the game, and then you look at like if you look at Kate here, like this behind me. This is this is our art director's version of Kate. This is what right. Kate looks like. And then if you look at the 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 other is box, this? the it's actually the one with Mitzi Martin, the orange box. Do you Wait, have Oh one? yeah. Uh, oh, we do. That one. Yeah, hey the, Jared, where's our orange box? So if if you look at Thank that you, one, <laughs> so look at this. I'll just ask you know I'll ask anybody watching this. I mean, does does that look like the same person? So for us, we're like that's not Kate. Like uh-huh. that's that this version was was right. more like the model that the publisher had hired <laughs> after we had already created the character. So there was a little bit of internal like, yeah, that's not really Kate. <laughs> so so you know that this the no one was forever the the orange <laughs> box we're not huge fans of right. the blue box we're, we were much bigger fans. That's of. cool. Just mm-hmm. yeah. And when I say we, it's it was me and yeah. some of the other leads at the oh, time. Yeah, too, uh, that is pretty awesome. cool. And put this particular one here do we want to oh get? now we're in 2 we're going to 2 oh we're going to Nolf yeah. 2 you got those guys yeah here. we got oh with, with Brian and Nathan here I think uh, yeah, I switched to Nolf 2 would you, would you guys like to scoot up no no you should join us I, I, I would happily like yield to this I think you guys I feel bad because I, mean, I haven't been looking at a music's high quality about, I mean um, well we talked about Archer I think it was a big one we actually are getting a lot of questions out of the way Ring also came out before Fear yes Ring was absolutely so quick quick aside on Fear um the Ring, Juwan, all of those were references for, for Fear. So we absolutely, it wasn't like we made Fear and then, oh, that stuff came out. It's like, no, that, that was absolutely influence, influential for Fear. So, sorry. No, that actually, that was it's a side. <laughs> Thanks for, well, DX is one of our big Fear fans. In fact, he, Nathan was on stream a while back and he had a lot of good audio questions. Yeah. If you have any more questions today, DX, lay them on us as always. Kilgore's with us too. Speaking of which, Kilgore, have you streamed Nolf anytime recently? Felt like I saw something earlier. Yeah, Side Eye Blizzard. Yeah, the orange box. But that happens. I mean, honestly, sorry, I, this is a side, but since, you know, we obviously still deal with publishing, marketing, and everything, it's it's always a collaboration, you know, so, cool. you know, it's never right. 100%, so you, you know, the, the marketing materials the consumers <laughs> see, it's never 100% what the dev <laughs> team wants or 100% what the marketing team wants. Now. It's always a collaboration, so... You know, I think at the time we didn't like it, but in hindsight, like I look at it now and I'm like, it's fine. Like it's, there's nothing, she, you know, she was very close to Kate and it was nice having a live action model. And I think she did a good job in the role. So I, you know, and you know, time gives you, you know, distance gives you kind of that understanding of like, yeah, there's a lot of variables, but you know, back then we were young and de- developer and it's like, we want everything to be exactly the way we want it. So. That's not a big deal. Did, did, um, so Excuse she did the, the photo shoot, and the yeah. then, then that was what you guys used for the model. But did you ever We didn't use that for the model. Oh, interesting. No, okay. no, the model, that's what I was saying. The model yeah. was developed right. separately. Oh, okay. She was, like, she came, publisher yeah. brought her in to say, yeah. oh, she's going to represent, uh, you know, Kate. And she, you know, and she looked kind of like Kate, but yeah. she didn't look 
you know, she looked like Mother, how she looked. You, you can't um, keep calling and me. so I think that I that, you know, but then she started, but then because consumers saw that first, it kind of, people got anchored to that. Yeah. Which for us was like, yeah, but that's not really what Kate looks like. So it was, but it's minor. I mean, it's it's close enough. It's kind of like Tomb Raider. I mean, there's how many actresses represent. Yeah, so at a certain point, you're just like, it's, you know, that character is kind of a combination of all of it. Yeah. You wanted to see me? All right, I want to take this opportunity to introduce uh, oh, uh, Nathan Grigg and Brian. I have a hard time saying your last name, so if you could for me. nominated. <laughs> you always have to say that. <laughs> yeah, he's our, That's right. well, Isn't that true from now on? It is true. Yeah, yeah. Bastard nominated. Middle name. There you go. Oh, in this regard. And Brian... Pamatuan. 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 I'm like, I'm going to follow the end grenade. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that no one's going to know. That's awesome. Yes. So with these addition of these two gentlemen, they are in charge of a lot of the sound from Nolf 2. So that's why we're having them in here, basically to listen to things and be like, oh my god, I know why that's there, and then give us a bit of a story. Right. I know the first thing they're going to say is, why is the sound turned down so low? That's, I, we go through this all the time. So the people at home can <laughs> hear it better. It literally, it's this darn mic. That's the thing we have to uh, let's see back into the mic. We can mic yeah. everybody, but then we get re yeah, or else right. we leave her. If yeah, I'm not back in totally. an hour, clear out and contact headquarters. So how many years separated this? Two, like, two, two years. Yeah, no, we, we, is, we no one, no one lives forever. To, I personally think the difference between our technology and no one lives forever one to no one lives forever two was our biggest leap. It's probably ever that we made. I mean, the the leap between you know this and fear was big. But this was this is when you know like it. John O'Rourke joined the team. Kevin Francis was on the team. Like we, we had some heavy hitters on the tech side, and um, you know that it made a huge difference. And the other thing that happened here um, on the art side is sorry, this is not audio related, but no. on the art side is you know David Longo had joined the team on um, uh, No One Was Forever. Uh, but it wasn't, I feel like he didn't really, there were certain things that in technology and stuff, it took him a while. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it, originally he was the art director. We didn't actually have the role art director. I think if you look at the credits for No One Lives Forever One, I think he has like lead 3D artist as his title. Mm -hmm. So art direction was more nebulous. And No One Lives Forever Two was the first time that he was like the art director from mm -hmm. day one, setting the guidelines. And you can tell, like mm -hmm. the whole mm -hmm. game is art directed. Right. And it's just it's so and it, it it comes across in pri in pretty much everything. Was that not having an art director? Was that a thing that because Monolith was growing, or was that a thing in the industry that there just wasn't really that role? No, it was Monolith. It just was. We were we were we really were garage studio yeah. that we're kind of figuring out as we went for a long time. And so you know, as we hired in more people like like Longo, when Longo got hired, um, he you know he got hired into this role. But then once he's on the team, he's like, hey guys, there's no art director, you know. And so he did the best he could, but it wasn't his role. And yeah. so he actually lobbied to say, hey, you know. I sh you should make you should make an art director and then we're like well you should do that and he's like oh, okay you know and so he I don't I don't remember him saying I should be the art director I remember him saying we need this role and then you know a lot of times what happens that's what happened with me and the director of engineering I said we need a director of engineering and they're like how about you yeah. I'm just like uh, that's not what I meant I know <laughs> suggest the role you want yeah that, really uh, I, that was yeah yeah because I think we had times where it was like. Hey, who's our sound engineer? Uh, sound on, uh, engineer. It was always like, well, hey, you're an AI engineer. You know some audio. Hey, oh yeah, you do yeah. some audio. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Right? That, that, that was the hot potato for the right? longest time. We didn't have an audio engineer. Yeah, that was always like, well, I'm not gonna do it. You do it. I'm not gonna do it. You do it. Yeah, it's. I mean, I, I always joke with Brian that audio is always like the. I can't get any closer. Cool is that okay? If, do you guys mind if I'm just oh. a half frame? Because you're Sorry. the stars of the show. I'm fat. I don't mind if I just here. like. Yes, can. Sure. Oh, well, here we go. Let's get there. I'm not sitting on your lap like traditionally I do yeah, when no. I come in to say Get comfortable. Not, not today. Not it is Friday, Friday though. <laughs> it is. Like, what is no tie? No lap Friday? I don't know. No, yeah, it's just, it is incredible to me. A, actually, props to you guys, first off, even just from the visual standpoint, and we get into the, to the sound, that in No One Lives Forever, that you had such a consistent look and feel then, when you really didn't have anybody doing that role. That must have been pretty crazy, like, well, how you determine that Yeah, I mean, we, we didn't have a single person, but the, the team was small, and, you know, and David, and Wes, and Craig, you know, they all, they, they talked a lot, and they stayed organized, so it, you know, they could do it. It just it just became the other thing is if you look at even just the like if you just look at 
you know, the number of polygons in this scene versus yeah, the number of polygons in the No One Lives Forever scene. Yeah. Just, you know, the magnitude, it probably is a magnitude difference. It, it, is, it, it feels that way. Yeah, it's just that, it's it's a lot more art, it's a lot more content. And so I think that that's the thing. And, I, you know, and obviously relative to a game today, it's not. But you got to remember, this is 2002 when this came out. So, you know, the it's, I still think it looks pretty good considering it came out in 2002. <laughs> and I think a lot Not of that's the art direction. Wow. I think more than anything, it's the art direction. It's it's the, uh, I mean, obviously the content is good content, but it's it was, you know, the, the graphics engine to, to make it all fit together and, you know, and, having somebody thinking about the look in broad strokes, not just individual pixels. Uh, sorry, we should talk audio. No, yeah, so, so <laughs> about audio. So when you guys are like approaching a game like this, like there, obviously, Brian, are you like the- and Obviously the, we had no UI person. <laughs> like I'm just looking at the UI and going, oh my God. <laughs> oh, I remember that. It is so like cluttered and just all over the place. That's probably because I probably just stuck it in. Like engineering wise, I said, here's a good place for it. Is it often the case that the engineer uh, heard gadgets? The... But anyway, so like you, yeah. you would work on this now. Were you, were you like the audio version of the uh, art director? Is that like how you would kind of? Yeah, because back then we we still had James Ackley, which was the he was the, the audio director at the time. Yeah, at the time, and Brian was uh, you know one of the main sound designers, and I was the composer. So, so we just it, it was it was still very very small. So it kind of divided up and like, mm -hmm. hey, you you take. Weapons and gadgets, yeah. UI. Obviously, Nate took all the music, and then James and I would kind of split up between between what's in the game that's needed. This is like one of those things. I think that a lot of people they think they might understand coding or they might understand graphics because it's mm -hmm. something so ready. But really, the process of sound is one I don't think a lot of people have much visibility into because you know when a game sounds tight, yeah. but 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 how you come about is really hard to, to do. So, like, how would you guys approach something like this? Like, what do you guys well, what you know. It, thing that brings me back is that our audio tech was lip tech still our audio engine was it was i mean we had no middleware it wasn't no it well, was there it was we were running you're we running direct music for, for the, the music oh, yeah, 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 yeah that's right yeah, yeah. Oh and this God. was the first I, game music. this was the first game that uh that had direct x8 in it um which actually allowed us to stream uh chunks of audio as opposed to just doing all this downloadable low memory sound set stuff where mm -hmm. we you know basically you mm -hmm. know all of north one is literally you know piano roll midi you know fed through downloadable <laughs> samples of really limited memory so this is real this different is game came out king, king of or nice <laughs> and p exorbitant amounts nice <laughs> do shish do wait am i gonna say that right duition <laughs> <laughs> said really quickly about lots of specialist roles in larger teams. How often were you guys tasked into producing assets that weren't in your usual line of work? Is that, is that something that came up a lot back then? Uh, well, for this, I mean, well, on the engineering side, I mean, on the audio side, I mean, they, uh, yeah. they still, I mean, you guys still, I mean, there's, you do all the music, but I mean, you still do all sorts of different yeah. audio. I mean, it's... I it, still kind of do, I mean, uh, it, even back then, in, in those days when we actually moved on to other games, I was kind of just doing the music that was the easier stuff because Nate was so good at the everything mm -hmm. else so I'm like I'll take the easy stuff I'll do the music on this <laughs> <laughs> it's a Nate on the hard stuff it's like the real music yeah. but then it was like divided up with because with, you know, then Nate's you, like no that's horrible <laughs> I have to do all the music <laughs> I'll just secretly take that out I'll just secretly like make it good uh, Brian made some great tracks for the Matrix Online I just have to say so yeah <laughs> but, but you do wear a lot of roles especially when you're kind of small and back then I feel like you kind of have yeah. to wear a lot of a lot of hats in a way we didn't do as much as like i feel like you know with with kevin's crew i feel I, like i like that question a lot of it was was still around the audio centric the stuff side of yeah. things but you guys still passed up back and forth yeah cyanide has a great question about side design transition composers always results in change but no two maintains the spirit and further builds upon it especially the dynamic elements was there a specific mindset in approaching it or was it like how fear two was in comparison to fear uh, let's question. see. Good question, Cyanide. Um, you know, I mean, with fear, you know, I I had you know developed a relationship, um, working relationship with a uh, guy Whitmore who was, uh, you know, I guess at the time sort of you know, running. Jim yeah, Gelmacher's on here. One. Is that uh, actually Jim Gelmacher? Oh, oh yeah, wow. up making He's, a lot of he UI was art. one of the programmers on. Yeah, uh -huh. nice yeah, so if that's Jim, like yeah, talk to Jim about the UI. 
Oh, that's great. Yeah. There you go. I mean, it probably is. We've been trying to push this out for a while. Jim? So yeah, I got what's up, Jim? <laughs> oh, God, PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Sorry, I just saw that. I was yeah. just like, he's no. right. Is, how does he know it was modeled after the Half Life UI? In any case, uh, sorry. No, it's all right. Uh, I I got um, I got pretty familiar with the Nolf One music because I actually helped arrange some of it. Um, and so, so that and then uh, yeah. Then it's just a matter of working with the designers, you know, when you actually come on board and and you know work as the primary composer on a game and you know talking about. Uh, um, you know, the, the whole aesthetic direction from there and trying to figure out, okay, what is, you know, here's the, here's the core, here's where, we're, here's where we're starting from, but then if you start looking at all the individual features of the game and this is all the new levels and all the new locations we're going to, um, the, the ideas just start to kind of come in from there, you know. So there's a, you know, it was really fun to, like, take it not just the, the, the core kind of <laughs> sort of humorous 60s aesthetic but actually you know taking it into other ele elements like there's a there's a level later in this it's an underwater uh, uh, harm base and yeah. it's you know it was really fun to kind of think about some of like the old Star Treks because it's a little bit sci-fi and then you know uh, combining that with like you know uh, kind of lost in space theremin stuff and like you know uh, um, and some of the other elements are submarine pings that were used musically sure. and just like a lot you know just being able to kind of expand on these things um which was really it was really fun the, the russian music was really fun the indian music was really fun. i mean all these different areas they're sort of like it's kind of the thing about about these games is that you know the, the there's always that kind of international spy thing going on mm -hmm. so you're always going to these all these exotic locales and you know you, ha you really have just with location alone mm -hmm. let alone all the dynamics that's going on in the story and the characters i mean you have a, a ton of opportunities to expand on on the language which is great well yeah because it's like world art gets to exp like a game like this you get to explore different levels with very different looks and feels and you guys get to do that exact same thing with just the soundscape of it with the music of it to be able to like Kind of put the player in those very different places. So we got to yeah. do a call out because so yeah, a bunch, yeah, so bunch of like, is yeah. is Vivian Francis who was Kevin Francis who was one of our one of the best engineers that ever worked at Monolith and it looks like Brian Long B Long I don't know which name he is on here but uh, mm -hmm. Brian Long was did all the AI and he was also mm -hmm. one of our great engineers um, and welcome. so yeah welcome wow. I don't know I, which 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 name Who's? is uh, Brian. Belong. Who's Belong? There. Oh, new yeah. obj. New obj. New obj equals. <laughs> What's up, Brian? <laughs> nice. <laughs> What's up, Brian? Wow, that's really cool. And obviously, uh, Jim Gelbacher, we already mentioned, was another one of our great engineers. So it's engineers. So, so good, I can leave. <laughs> oh, we, we have all the other engineers here. <laughs> I don't remember awesome. any of the code anyways. So that, is, that is awesome. So chat, you are amongst a bunch of engineering luminaries who worked on this and many other model of games. Yeah, if you have is. questions about the engine, you got yeah. uh, yeah. Pinbender. If you got uh, questions about the AI, you got Belong. Questions about a ton of gameplay uh, Gelmacher worked on. So that's incredible. Yeah. I have a, a, a sound thing. So Kevin was saying right before you guys got in how uh, when, when the process of Nolf came about and, and other games that Monolith has worked on, they always talk about like scenes and movies and different kinds of inspiration. When you guys are, are thinking about the next thing you want to do, how do you guys get inspiration for different kinds of things? I mean, is it go to shows, yeah. hang out at concerts? <laughs> you know, I wish. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't really come into like, oh, I need to go get inspiration now. You know, yeah, basically yeah. it's a matter of, you know, we're interested in the craft of all of this stuff. And so I think that when we do go and do those things, you know, in our copious spare time, which we have less and less of the farther we're into a death cycle. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, it's just, you realize, you really start using everything that you have. So memories of, you know, like when I was thinking of this stuff, I mean. Did we go to Japan I was this? I, I, I miss, I miss this personally, like for example, personally I missed the 60s by about uh, two and a half weeks. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was born in 1970. So, um, but through television yes, I, and, and movies, I, I really kind of, you know, drew a lot of, you know, memories from things. Not stuff that I'd even, even watched or you know viewed recently, um, even just stuff that I just remember. Oh, I remember hearing. I remember hearing this kind of sound from my childhood. I want to put this in here. You yeah. Know? Um, 
Uh, and so a lot of it is, yeah, you, you, you draw from, from those things, from, you know, your experiences in, you know, music, either live or recorded from TV and from film and things like yeah. that, but Crawl it's all there. there. It comes, Get it comes there. at you Go like hide. while you're writing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, just things that you hadn't even thought As of respect for years, you know, which is really, uh, it's really fun. Do you find, do you ever record sounds on the fly that you hear something really interesting and you like, something. Like yeah, the, mom, the I remember Angry Kitty. Oh, that was like, great. Her, gadg her gadgets were awesome. Oh, yeah. Mom, her and, was and I'm like, like Mom, it's the 60s. Get used to it. And she's like, it's disrespectful. It's just unbelievable. The, 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 the teenage oh, girl ninjas. Leaving. Or What happened? Uh, yeah. It's like he's taken off. Uh, I will play no forever. Who, who is leaving? Who's leaving us now? Uh, it's got to be done. But I'm sorry, so you're saying awesome. like, you, you find sounds and then you, you reminisce that way? I, oh, uh, no. I mean, as far as when you're saying, you're, do we go out and like field yeah. record and things yeah. like that? Oh, sometimes we do. Sometimes we either, sometimes we coordinate times, like the whole team will go out and, and, and uh, field record and stuff. I yeah. saw some of your guys in the stairwell the other day, leaving yeah. work. Remember? And it was like, because I was walking down, and all of a sudden there's a bunch of mics. Right. There's just <laughs> odd places that we go in. And then, <laughs> and then you're walking and you're like, what's all this junk? Oh, you haven't used like, Angry Kitty? Oh, it's, 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 oh, it's great. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> this is really, you guys really up your game. There was Not the banana in this. The was banana's it? coming. The banana's coming later. Comes later. <laughs> I love the banana. Really? <laughs> I don't think you get the banana until like the Unity base level, I think. It's, it's pretty, it's later. Are you it's, sure? like, it's about halfway through the game. Right? I don't know. I tested so many banana. things yeah. in this level mm -hmm. that I don't remember what is actually in the game versus like, right. you know, because I would you test all the oh, weapons. You test yeah, because yeah, yeah, this was like the first here, level, yeah. so I would yeah. test it here all the time. Oh, remember you hit those the wind chimes? Yeah, the wind chimes. That was good. Yeah, and the, the, the bump. We yeah. have to give away a box game pretty soon, Jerry. And you can ring them too. You can like, I think you can. Like, I think the AI will come over if you do that. That's right. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I think so. I, I, Brian would remember probably. <laughs> Brian, be long. <laughs> <I know. laughs> You're in trouble now. This is a shoot. Yep. Oh yeah, see. She oh, yeah. came to check out the. the and then she just, she just. Uh, oh, you got all that sorts. Knocker thing. That's you got like all sorts of different. Uh, you got poison bolts. Fire bolts, poison bolts. I didn't remember. Angry you, kitty uh, bolts. Did you cheat? I, no, I just I, I take stuff off he's of You can pick thorough. stuff off of courses. Oh, you see how thoroughly he's been ravaging yeah, each I know. and every course. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to no be efficient. Turn. I just didn't remember you know, them. Waste not, not want his. not, right? <laughs> I just thought those were things you got later in the game. I didn't remember being in the first. <laughs> oh, oh, this is where you get poison. And I remember there chickens would be, come out. This is what I'm talking about. There's goat sounds, and then we did yeah, like sheep goats. sounds. When you get poison, <laughs> I think it was supposed to be this crazy too. LSD kind of trip. <laughs> I think that I think that was like the pigeons or whatever. I thought we there was did supposed to be a goats. cow. I thought that we was, goats. There was too. goat. There was. Yeah, I remember no, there was something. <laughs> Is there a DX wants to know if there's a monolith conspiracy to give every game a, a, a subtable? Which really, that's, that's a compelling that's list. That's more of an in, that's no. yeah, that's more of an industry wide thing. Honestly, no. mm -hmm. not monolith. We are we are going to try very hard to make sure our next game does not have a subtitle. You <laughs> <laughs> heard it here, folks. First, here, folks. I am going to fight as that's hard awesome. as I can <laughs> to make sure there's no subtitle in the next game. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. We're also going to have cinematics that are just a black screen with only word, like speaking on it. No although, text on screen. <laughs> although I will say, for No One Lives Forever 2, we did kind of try to make the title really long on purpose. Because yeah, technically like, the title is The Operative, right. <laughs> No One Lives Looking Forever 2, us, yep. A Spy in Harm's right. Way. Like We did try to go, let's go crazy with this. Since, yeah. since we knew we were going to have a long title, yeah. it kind of got yeah. out, of, out of control. <laughs> Oh man, even that. that it really the lipstick thing, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the makeup case. The compact, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I, I mean, I really do awesome. think that the the difference Break between No One Lives Forever, and No One Lives Forever Two, just the upping the game across the the board. I mean, in the team too, the team was a lot a lot stronger team. We got mm -hmm. we had some really good hires. We kind of got lucky because Litech kind of they they gave us some of their engineers. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we got some of our engineers. <laughs> so that actually helped us quite a bit. Yeah, just 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 the texture, just everything that you see, all the little that the decoding, that's such a neat yeah. extra touch. I'd forgotten about that. <laughs> Is that a Geldmacher? Really Did cool. you do that Geldmacher? 
can't remember that. I, I think he did. Those guys with <laughs> Tracy says, Tracy here from Modelist says, she's going to champion DX's cause. <laughs> do her damage to make sure the next game <laughs> does have a subtitle. Well, right. good luck with that, Tracy. You got to fight me. <laughs> Not a real fight, because you'd win that. <laughs> So where, so where now are we going, Jared, in this... Uh... So far, I have left a bunch of bodies behind me. Yes, and, uh, that was a good sign. I, I was under the impression that I was supposed to be a bit more stealthy, but I thought that I would share in the, uh, the sweet, sweet taste of death. I just think the ninja motif would lead you to believe that. It right. Just, it just depends on your skill set. Look at that. Stealth. 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 Sound the alarm. No idea I was here. This ninja's for always the rage. Yeah, see, we had alarms back in No Man's Forever too. That wasn't a I just shadow board or thing. Yeah, we did that back in No Man's Forever. I remember that. I couldn't turn those off though. That's what I kept waiting for. I was trying to sabotage them, and then it's like, no, you can't actually sabotage them. In No Man's Forever. Yeah. But the guards can see. So we got you. So here we go. Can I, I have can to block sure with my sword? Can go back and just smoke one. Those stay for questions. I don't think we had blocking. Lith Tech was originally. What does Pinbender say? Oh, what did he say? Lith Tech was originally. Developed by Monolith and split into its own company. Ah. Uh, Eventually reabsorbed. Is Lith Tech not Monolith Tech? It is Monolith Tech. Yeah, it? we threw it over the fence. So Lith Tech was a separate company. He's. Yeah. Pinbender's yeah. right. We have to. Touchdown. Well, it was originally Lith Tech, but they changed their name to Touchdown. Yeah. We need a good trivia question. Good trivia yes. question. Oh, to, yeah. Uh, I know a good trivia, trivia question. Yeah? You, all right, do it. What does harm jammed. stand for? Oh, that's <laughs> what does harm stand for? <laughs> First person to answer that gets... Nobody worked on the game. Yeah, nobody worked on the game. <laughs> like they, they Have a rad Monday. Monday. <laughs> right. What does harm stand for? Have a rad Monday. That's my addition to it. That's, there you go. It's the, kind, it's the kindest forwards. evil group of people ever. It doesn't it, say look it right at that. There. You can actually see. This is an unopened... Wow. Trick question. Let's see, I see. I don't even know, man. Popped up. Pinbender is sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, no comment. Her alternate replacement. Membership, uh, I like if it. only that were true. I know it's funny saying Unity. Do you guys get any royalties now off of the Unity? Hell, awesome, awesome retro, retro movies. movies. Unity? Yeah, I'm joking. Unity. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. oh. <laughs> right? It's yeah, like, yeah, was yeah. that developed in... I'm like, what are you talking about? It was developed <laughs> in harm. Still waiting. Somebody's got it going to the internet right now. I know, you, you guys have the internet. Forward. I know, at this point, we're not even saying it doesn't stand for... Where do I go? Replacement membership. That, that is one of the ones I think we had in there. More <laughs> sneaking. Oh, that's actually Steven of Night Dive Studios. Head of Night Dive Studios. How you doing, Steven? So is hair alternative replacement membership? It doesn't stand for anything. It doesn't it was, stand for no, anything. We never, that was like on purpose. We put a lot of those things in the game, though. Like, there are places, and in Fear, I think we actually had... Was it Fear? Was it Fear Jim? I don't remember, but we actually put it in there. But it's it, it was always that was always one of the conceits is we didn't want it to stand for anything, right? So that's, so that that's the big secret. Only hey, fellas, really there are only fails. I know. <laughs> only fellas, <laughs> only fails. That means really you much. win. You win. <laughs> that's not you win the box. <laughs> that's who I am. I think only fails. Yeah. Yeah, no, you got it. So here's my question yeah, for you. Yeah, he was right. He was yep, right. Yep. So here's my question for you. Do you want the guys to sign it, or do you want to have it still just pristine? We got to get – everybody on here has to sign it. Jim and Francis and uh -huh. Elon, right. you guys need to come in. Yeah, you got to go come. Except for Jim. Jim. Jim, are you in California? He's here. <laughs> Is he here? You yeah. back? Yeah, you guys got to come by the studio. It's true. We'll do more we of these. Yeah, Mulkey's here too. Mulkey's back in town. Only fails. Signed, please. Yeah. Signed it is for you, my friend. We'll have you sign Oh, I have pens over here. You oh, do, do you now. pass us one? That would be exciting. So you want to sign now? Well, yeah. It's, it's This is movie magic right here. Uh -huh. Movie magic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is stream magic. What, co what color not, do you want? Black or blue? I'm not sure blue's Blue's not work. really going to work yeah. very well. Oh, this is real time it's, it's, it's oh like, yeah, Mulkey's on your team. I didn't know I you worked with Francis. Or sorry, Francis worked with Mulkey. Here, I'll... Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry, it's just it's like me, me, right. me, and, me and Francis just get a private channel. Uh, do you, where right. do you, where do you want it? Do you want it on the outside, the inside, the back? See, this is exciting. You only get to do this with live streaming. Who want it? Wherever Pricing it shows up better. Time. Whichever shows. Do you want it on the front? The front? Sorry. <laughs> no, no apologies. That would, that would be cool, wouldn't it? Because or on the inside. 
Casey. Outside, please. Outside. A secret yeah. location. Because yeah. it goes up nice on the bookcase. <laughs> Now, isn't there a Prima strategy guide in this? I mean, this thing is loaded. It's like we're selling them still. Now, this thing is loaded, isn't it, as I hear? Brian, would you like to? It's been known to give you more energy and help you sleep as well. Here's the actually got a level in it. It's got a level in it. It's got a level in it that you can only get in the game of the year edition. All the front, okay. Operative game, more fire. Oh, in the lounge music CD. Can someone <laughs> Nathan, can you tell us about that? Not really. <laughs> this is, this is I don't. Soundtrack. That I don't I, it's not. It's. Um. I don't think there's any original game music oh, in that. No, scenario. that was the yeah. whole the Chris Miller thing. Yeah. That was the in the lounge that they got a bunch of That's a uh, license music. License music. Yeah. yeah. It's like sixties uh, inspired. It's a cool. I have to say, it's a cool cover. It's a cool. It's like uh, yeah. Uh, here, let's Thanks. bust open only fails and see. <laughs> I know. Yeah. If you bust it, you're gonna bust open your game. <laughs> We're just gonna break open your game. It's what's a, in there. We didn't tell strategy. you we would know boss. Right. There's some cool retro <laughs> stuff in there, though. There is the Prima guide that's on the that's boot. Fun. Right on the boot. Dude, on the boot. Yeah. I am. Uh, All right, Jared. I am lost. What are you getting out of this? Brad's on team two, so God, the heat. Like you're you're bringing the team back together, there, Pinbender. Like he's got Moki and Brad on his team. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, say hi to both of them. I, I talked to Mulkey recently, but not not Brad. I haven't seen him for a while. You guys should all come by Monolith sometime. That would be very cool. By the way, because I know Stephen Kick is on here of Night Dive. So, so Kevin, <laughs> Thanks, that, well, you don't know who owns the rights to No One Lives Forever, right? No. It's, it's yeah. I mean, he knows. He's done the what well, he's done. He's all talked the to work. the legal. It's, it's, it's. It's complicated, unfortunately. Yeah. It's not just so. I mean, anybody that's like looking for remasters, sequels, all that stuff, don't know that it's not because Monolith is is blocking it. It is it is up the corporate chain and spread out across multiple companies. It's complicated. So. Um, that should be our sticky post at the top of our Twitter page. It's complicated. <laughs> just <laughs> it's complicated. It's like, why are you doing it? It's complicated. <laughs> That is that. All right, so what are you thinking here, Tenshu? Yeah, what are you doing? Are you just what are you doing? I, I don't know. <laughs> like, what are you doing here? We give the people a show. I'm trying. There's. I don't know where to go. Open up that Prima strategy guide. I need some help. <laughs> we should. Hey, what? What is? I can't remember what this mission so, was. So yeah, you I'm, have to go to the mailbox. Okay, so I go to. Is this a mailbox? Yeah, that's yeah. A mailbox. I don't. It might not be that one. There's probably more than one. Oh, pick up. Got some fire bolts. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, actually, mailbox. I think it isn't a mailbox like that. If I remember correctly, it's an actual like little mailbox. Like it has a little flag. I think so. If All I right. remember correctly, I we can ask some of the locals. Remember. Yeah, ask her. <laughs> oh wait, me. she's drunk. Uh, I just. Or dead. They're fine. <laughs> They're sleeping. I think it's in a different part of the map. Do you, Kevin, do you remember the martini glasses swag? Yeah, I, I have some at home. And tumbler. I, I have some at home. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's fine. Where oh that would have been a giveaway. That what was that was marketing terms. swag. Yeah, it's it's a mailbox like that, like okay. that blue one, but it's a red one. Okay, uh, so, is that it? Uh, I think uh, that's uh, it. Uh, uh, nope. No, open. Oh, 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 oh. oh. The there top. It is. You gotta open the top. That's so <laughs> Wait, what was the thing? <laughs> we found it. Uh, maybe it's a different mailbox. Oh, was it the red one? Look at that. Even pick up. Your there no. really is just, I, I keep gushing. Can. I, I, can, I can do this. So I can do this. much difference. Oh, I'm out of ammo. <laughs> Could have told you that before he bent down there, but. All right, now we can pick it up. There you go. Mm. <laughs> Show off the features. <laughs> Speed which did you guys play any Tenchu as part, a little bit of inspiration for this, or was that? I think Craig liked Tenchu, but I, I never got into Tenchu. Oh, I love Tenchu. I don't remember when that came out, though. I, it, earlier, I think like, I'm like ninety nine percent sure it's not that. Were you supposed to take a picture of it? Like, I have no idea. What it's was? It. Well, read the note. Let's see. Let's let's look at our instructions. Our intelligence. Ah, there you go. When in doubt, go back to me. Rendezvous You've with Hatori Sun, or recover all four pages of the Unity Field Menu. Optional. Optional. So you I need to actually just find Hatori. Need to find Hatori. Wait, go, wait, go back, go back. Cyanide knows there are mailboxes on the side of the houses. You open and close the lids. Okay, then what do we do next, Cyanide? <laughs> Help us. I don't think he opened the blue one. What was, like, what did it say to do? All right, so these ones are telling us about, like, oh, they needed a stuff. They their vending machine. The boxes needed a pattern, and the red one needed open. See, this uh, is what's great, mm, is when you yeah. have... 
good people in chat that can Yeah, because you kids just don't pay attention. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. We, we actually, DX was helping us with our fear playthrough. We would get, Tracy was on with us, and sometimes he, we would get stuck It's not in that places. one. It's the it's those other mailboxes you opened. All right. Just so look, there's a pattern. Look at the wall. It's just, what's the pattern? Some vending machines, they had comments about them. Help us one, Kenobi. <laughs> No, it's it's <laughs> no. the other it's the other mailbox where you were before. All right, I'll head back that way. Is red one closed something like a store? Okay. Oh, is it new? Finish translating ID letters. Wait until it's fully deciphered. Like the red one, as mentioned, needed to be opened, and you have to check the other coded notes. Okay, so I'm supposed to decode. Something like a store. Thief was a great game. New object. So we'll, we'll do the decoding. I enjoyed Thief. On the wall. Yeah. 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 The original one. Red yeah. mailbox should. There are three mailboxes yeah, so in front of the sweet shop. You must have is uh, Brian Long, who did all the AI for this game. Oh, right on. So as far as, you know, how, you know, the AI, his inspirations. Because a lot, back then, a lot of it was, you know, Craig would have ideas, but, you know, it really was the engineers that were making the moment to moment with not as much direct, like, design it this way. And so there'd be, there'd be iteration, obviously, but, you know, basically, if you love the AI, you got to give props to Brian. There's, there's a, uh, Brian, oh, there's wait. Okay, so here, here's the ordering that we have to do. Brian, there's a person that has contacted right. us recently on social that uh, was pouring over the AI that you did for the for Nolf. And actually, he's going to kill himself that he wasn't on the stream to talk with oh, you today no. and ask you questions. Because he, he just he couldn't do it. He was too late. He's from England. He said he had to work early. But the point is, he was peppering me with questions about the AI. Ah, there and I have go. no answers. <laughs> he's over there. There you go. Lovatory. We've done it. Woohoo! 400 skill points. Oh, the <laughs> new location of the meeting. So this, I have noticed that I have recharging uh, health now. That was something that didn't exist uh, oh. in North 1. You mean that when you're out of combat? It, it yeah, yeah, it comes back. It's, it's a lovely experience. Wow, so we thought, we thought Halo was the first to do that. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot that... Oh, sorry, Brian. I was giving Brian props for uh, Nolf 2. I forgot that he did Nolf 1. Yeah, Nolf 1 and was... Jeff Orkin did... Uh, I thought you... Didn't you work on it at all, Brian? I thought... Did you guys split the time? I can't remember. See, I'm old. This is a problem being old. You get everything. <laughs> that's publishing so many games. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what that's I meant to say. Yeah, that's yeah, right. the correct way to say it. Yeah. <laughs> Too many games. Pre-production. All right, so we're supposed to look for a Oh, that's station. right. He, I forgot he went on to Matrix. Look at the facial animations. Okay, so if you love the AI, it's the part Brian did, because Jeff's not on this. <laughs> but if Jeff were on here, I'd say the same thing. No. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm reading chat. Chat, thank you guys for your help so far. Yeah, what are we doing? I've been told to go to places where ninjas seem to hang out. Right. Can we, uh, do you have saves later? Uh, not this one actually. Oh, you don't. This uh, was this was we've been playing uh, through diligently. I was gonna say uh, you could we could go to the man crates. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. The man crates would be great. Mm. Where can, you, can you type like there's a cheat code? Cheats, yeah, yeah cheats. cheats. Oh, that would be great. All right, chat. If one of you guys could Google a cheat, move <laughs> to the man crate. You don't know awesome. the cheat. I know oh, the I cheat. I think I know the cheat. Oh, you really? Know the, cheat? the man crate so. cheat. Well, I think to go through each level, I think there's a like an MP map hole or something like that that you can type in. Try it. Move get the forward. Forward. No, no, no. You gotta do MP. Yeah. M. I thought, I thought MP. It wasn't on MP. Is it underscore? Mm, I don't think so. I feel like it was. It's a map. Yeah, map hole. Map hole. I think it's all one word. It should uh, be one word. Just MP map hole. And I don't know if it's in this. Say, I thought it was in the. Um, hmm. Can you hit the tilde or whatever? Map hole is absolutely right. No, uh, it doesn't give me a tilde right. option. Oh, it doesn't? No. I don't remember being in the chat. Coin. Who remembers? Did you try just map hole? Uh, sure, I'll try that. Oh, yeah, map, just map hole. Yes. Okay. I have, uh, I have friends to uh, express yeah. my friendship with. I don't with. remember. We did so many. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now we're going to Siberia. Now, who made this game? <laughs> Us or you? I, I think know. you made it. <laughs> Siberia, right? That's where we're going next. All right. Siberia. So we have Slenderman going somewhere. Cool. Oh, and skill points. All right. So should I do map hole again? Yes. 
Alright. Yeah, it's, I'm thinking late in the game. In, into the future, everyone. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty far into the game, though. <laughs> like, I don't... I, there's gotta be a faster way. Everybody, join us for the cinematic enjoyment of Nolf 2 while we're moving. <laughs> oh, that jump from Nolf 1 to Nolf 2 we were discussing is pretty amazing. Yeah, man crates are really late in the game. Really? Yeah, they're really late. There Entirely may be other late. things we might want to see along the way, like Pierre the Mime King. Uh, that's Wait, true. Wait, just the I says I was the lead coder. Trap. Is that right? I don't think we ever do that. Is that. Are you saying, Cyanide, you were former modeler? I, I think he's uh, playing along because he oh. told us the... Uh, <laughs> because actually, Sh Cyanide Blizzard was also Shogo, big Shogo contributor when that stream no, you did, Kevin. You have many Huge. Enemies. I don't know who it is. You. Yeah. And so actually won some of our Shogo prizes, train. in fact. I'm impressed. I didn't expect so if Cyanide make... Blizzard was lead cutter, it's Brad. Oh, <gasps> Stabs! They killed Gay Darcher. If he was lead on this. If he was if if this person said he was the lead on Nolf, no. he's lying because I was the lead yeah. on Nolf. <laughs> <laughs> what? Get King killed? All right, now we play as this new person. Wait, if she falls on the ground, this was. Oh, uh, wait a second! I see it's a conspiracy. So you were the voices in our heads. <laughs> we discovered you. Oh yeah. This is a hundred percent opening credit sequence. That's, I totally oh, forgot you know, about that. Open. That is great. I totally oh, forgot about that. Well, shortcut that. Oh, I'm sorry. Do right, you want to go back? Is there is there a... a... Not like that. <laughs> is that Volkov? Uh, from the first game? It is Volkov from the first game. Of course she is. Isako doesn't make mistakes. <laughs> Do you, Isako? That's a hell of a wine glass. <laughs> well, that's reassuring. Yeah, it's been so long. Cyanide and I secretly go to the original game. Like, I, it's almost like, I'm like brand wow. new. Now, Dimitri, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember expect? that. A head on a platter? Remember that? That <laughs> yeah, was just so that. like. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> he's he's um, early in the in the game. Cinematics don't feature Terrence Sloggins though. He comes in later. We'll try to get to the mime king. That would you be you remember this really well. Sensei, I'm surprised you remember this well. You said discuss my future when the girl was dead. He's the director. The random drunk is the director. <laughs> it's, it's That's him nice. right there. He's not random. Well, he was. Oh, right, because wasn't he revealed it, like, oh to be... Oh my god, they're yeah. all smoking. You know, that was... Um, I... That was uh, John Gramlich's oh idea. Well, to have the drunk dude be... Yeah, why is John not here? Did you guys invite John? We tried to invite everybody we could, but some people are stream shy. Yeah. That's the truth. We can't get Wes in here to see John. I don't think John... Did you ask John? I don't think John's stream shy. Who else With, is that? Uh, John Grant. I didn't cast a wide net. See you in a few weeks. Well, I got good. all the people in that email. Yes, we can go back and look. Because yeah. uh, John, John's uh, Actually, one of our uh, advanced designers uh, here really at Monolith. Mm -hmm. Now he's you know he's been here forever. But he was uh, he, he he led QA on No One Lives Forever. That's right, and then one. he switched over. And then I. I don't remember if he was. I think he was Sorry, still QA on No One Was Forever Two. I think he still was lead QA. I don't think he went into design until after that. that. I don't remember when he went into design. John, I talked to him about it. Remember, because he actually was the first person that pointed me towards these boxes. Because he still has one in his desk. Top shape. Then let me do something useful. I'm wasting away. I picked up a North Martini. Can't see around Yeah, he is. That's the one you were talking about. The the swag. And John Martini glass? It's like two glasses. Yeah, there's the two glasses. The logo <laughs> on it and then the shaker. Normally I really forgot about one of these characters. Uh, what it's other there. swag was there for Nolf? I feel like there was some, but there wasn't a lot. The last lie. one was the, the biggest. Quite so. I'm fine. You need to rest. I, I thought I told you to stay. There wasn't a lot. We didn't, we didn't get swag back Gentlemen, then. <laughs> this is I remember they were giving away the stand up top under the standy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, those. Yeah, I had that for the longest time. Rich has one of those in his office. Yeah, yeah, I had one of those for the Thank longest you, time. I think uh, Nate might have one. I think I gave it to Mr. Nate. Mr. Lowry, uh, as Archer, <laughs> allow me to get straight to the point, by all means. <laughs> Are you familiar with the Actually, yeah, Steven, he's the guy that sent us all those posters that went like casting that. No, I mean, you might remember more. I think that that was more of just a voice acting, like, mm -hmm. you know, different times you can't get the same voice actors, to believe the and so I don't, we didn't recast on purpose, I don't believe, I mean, it's possible, I mean, it's also possible that someone on the team didn't like an actor, actress, but I don't, I don't think that was the case with Kate, I think we just didn't, I think we just didn't get the first actress. But yeah, because they swapped out 
Mm -hmm. I forgot about that actually. Well, there was, I had read that it was the Scottish accent. They, they wanted a, well, you guys would have wanted a different sound for the, for the voice and a little more Scottish sounding. It's pop. Somebody might remember that that's Monolith that's on here, old Monolith guys. But I don't remember. I don't remember Craig, because it would have been Craig. I don't think she was available. Yeah, first, I don't think she was, was available. Like that. Because I don't. It was, I, I don't remember Craig like disliking mm -hmm. the original actress. My guess is she just wasn't available. I wish we could get Craig on the stream sometime. Craig would be awesome. Yeah, I I, I would love to. to I, you you probably have obviously more contact than I do. I could just solicit him out of the blue. Well, he's working on the division two. He works for Ubisoft now, so mm -hmm. it might be challenging. Is he in Europe? Yeah, he's in Malmo. <laughs> I remember this level. <laughs> oh my god. Yes. So am I to map hole some more, or am I to? Yeah, Jim doesn't remember anything. I don't think there's any drama. I love this level. This, this, I, this? I love. The, and then the snowmobile. Yeah. Oh and... God, the snowmobile! Don't, 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 don't drive the snowmobile. But, but, <laughs> uh, it's embarrassing. Oh uh, hey, like rails. Steven, if you, if you have any more posters to send, I had to turn away easily about five or six people that would have still left one. But we could get one of those posters signed. So maybe we can. Uh, Work something out. Oh, you're talking about the those those posters? Oh, yeah. Those were cool posters. Yeah, thank you for those, by the way. Hey, don't kill the what? bunny. What are you Why? doing? It's an immortal rabbit. Look at how it's immortality. I love. It's just you're you running it down. It's either oh. that or ride the snowmobile. Fuck I, I tried the snowmobile. Oh, snow. you, you, oh, this is a great level. This is a great level. Yeah, I like this level. Oh, success! Oh. You just had to do that. Now skin oh. it. Now skin it. The red dead too. <laughs> Right. And then cook it. <laughs> right, I'm trying to get into the doors. Uh, I don't. There we go. I think you can. I have found a solution. Oh, I don't well. think that's gonna work. Yeah. I, I don't know. What Dynamite. Dynamite. <laughs> Dynamite never does. Why work. do you think that's gonna work? How about just regular open? No. That'd be great gray reason. means you can't open it. Oh, uh, okay. Don't you know what gray means? Come on. <laughs> it's. Oh damn it. Ooh, ooh. You can stealth kill that dude though. I believe he's, he's, he's known as pilot. pilot. Oh, so use your pilot. You there you go. <laughs> he's like, oh, why? You're going to starve up here. Uh, Sir Spiffy, you monster. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I'm, I'm just feeding the hungry people. So now we're looking for the keys. See, we did this long before Red Dead. No, I'm just joking. Exactly. <laughs> you're just like, you're just like deep crafting. I'm, just, I'm totally joking. Stealing. Just go way down the rabbit hole, so to speak. Spy training. Yeah. Oh, bear trap, nice. But I don't know if you got the spy training manual. I think you left it there when you picked up a bear trap. Oh well. I love the spy training. Yeah, you want I, me to pick it up? I agree. Yeah, I feel like the game still looks really good. Ah. Mm -hmm. I, it, it, really it does. Actually, I mean, yeah. for you know, it's 16 years old. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> it it's looks fun. a hell of a lot better than I do 16 years later. <laughs> 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 I will lock pick the radio. All right, turn on. Maybe that'll. Yeah. Radio. Uh, it yeah. does look really good. Like this is head and shoulders. Generate the result back. Cause like uh, the first one, we, we were noticing how like there was no facial animation. Mm -hmm. There was no. There was blinking eyes. Oh, uh, blinking eyes. <laughs> what did you call it? Jared, the stuff of nightmare. <laughs> okay. Well, Br seeing Bruno's face the first time. Oh, was Rosebud. Just, uh, yeah. What was Rosebud was. Was that for the uh, snowmobile? Yeah, I think so. Hey, try try that cheat. Try Rosebud. All right. What did it do? I, I think. There, oh, yeah, snowmobile. Made, 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 oh, made yeah, made a snowmobile for you. Oh, just ignore that. It's, oh. Just use it. Yeah, it's right I mean, in the middle of that pillar. I that's fine. It'll work. Uh, It'll work. <laughs> yeah, you got to do this. This is sort of another great James Bond. Oh, uh -oh. you got stuck. No, no, I'm getting off because right, I don't want to vomit. Um, Wait, then, uh, we'll move <laughs> over to... Radio is in back room. Radio in the back room, and then they're going to force us to do a, a snowmobile experience soon enough. Why are you not going to... We don't force you. It's <laughs> totally optional if you want to keep playing. Autonomy. <laughs> the autonomy is you can play the game or not. You have choices. Yeah, there you go. Stop playing. You could run around and shoot rabbits if you want. Woo! No one lives forever. No rabbit lives forever. No. <laughs> Just one more. It's a... Stay dead, you. Oh jeez, oh jeez, thank goodness. Present for me. Mm -hmm. so standard issue, utility launcher, ten you Cool. <laughs> You're here, uh. go here. Cool. Tip over. 
Yes. That's funny. That was the most important thing to do in that. Room. Yes, exactly. Yeah, now you got a welder now. So, Nathan, did you have you played through this? Oh wait, wait, go back, go back. Me, the, this open game? the drawer. Yeah. Open the drawer. I think there was a, a time, yeah, and maybe not too long ago where I played through a lot There's of it. Got to be something wanted, one of these drawers. I wanted to capture some of it. What a so way to find have, out. <laughs> have some videos with some. Can't use bandages. I, I haven't. See, we had drawer opening long before Red Dead. Did. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Long, long <laughs> before. Like, Trend setting. I forgot we had all this stuff, to be honest. Not a lot of drawers and mortar, you know? It, this is a little bit like the opening uh, of Red Dead. Yeah, know, like only the... about five times faster. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so how many of these can I do until Sorry. we start having a problem? Yeah, I'm making fun of the most popular game maybe ever. It's like, sue me. <laughs> with an almost 20-year-old game. Yeah, with a 16-year-old game. Wait, is this person shooting at me because yes. I made a bunch? Run him over! Get on the snowmobile and run him over. Okay, yeah. Run him over. Do it. Hook shot. This is the fun part. Get him! There you go. Get him! Get yeah. him! Yeah. Get him! Oh! Yeah. Got him! Yes. Why were they coming out of the house we were just in? Because they came and they saw you. Yeah. But no, I they, was just in there. No, you no, you weren't just in there. I guarantee that they Thank came you. and then they went searching for you in the house <laughs> and you happened to come out. <laughs> Right, just right on. What is this? That's you know how oh. things spawned back then. It was a different Wrong way. <laughs> oh god. Oh wow. Yeah, get well, him! Yeah. Get him! Yeah. Oh, nice! <laughs> oh, it's oh. one of the birds! That's the robot bird. It's yeah. Santa. Santa! Target practice with the Oh. Yeah, very funny. I am hilarious. He's got cameras for eyes. He knows your shooting. Alright, don't you have to go down that hill? Uh, that was the one I just went down to the All plane. Right. Okay, what are these guys saying? A sign go, go, go that way. Yeah, game in the yeah. ear box. A kidney? What's your blood type? Oh yeah, speaking of which, before <laughs> this all ends, yeah. what's your blood type? Yeah, all right, how, how old are you? <laughs> if it's a young kidney, I can get some good money for that. Right, oh, jump, jump. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes. Oh, yes. boom! Oh, way ahead of Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> yeah, stunt shot. Not, not like by everything. much, by a year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you can turn with the mouse. I always forget about the music's first one, because that was the overhead view, right? First two. First two, and so then, yeah, it's, it always thinks like... The okay. bridge is out ahead. Yeah, what is the shit game? Oh, come on now, that's just me. <laughs> that person doesn't know what they're saying. Better than Blood 2 out of 10. <laughs> uh, I just want to look left without turning. I have a neck. Is her model really right now? That's what uh, Jim said before. It's uh, it's like a it's like a weapon. It's like a first person weapon. Though in multiplayer, she was riding it. There you go. I would like one point, please. Jim, it's not a hack. The whole thing is a hack. It's, it's not virtual reality. These were really fun. So, do you guys want me to um, go map hole forward? Yeah, why not? Because where are the man crates? That sounds oh, that's closer silly. to the end. It's, yeah, you're going to end up... Like, <laughs> Jim's like, whatever. The problem is, is how do you go back once you've done that? You that's might want to do save games and stuff. Cause, you know. I don't want to worry too much about it. I can do this. Game. Siberia. Where was Bud? Causing trouble. Was Bud, yeah. I like yeah, the I don't, I don't Citizen think, Kane reference. I don't think the... Uh, Driving through this level is probably going to be the most fun. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Are we going to... Well, for you, but... <laughs> <laughs> for everybody else. Everyone. <laughs> we, we have provided barf bats. So this is the tornado in the trailer park level, right? Yeah. That's, That's a good level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that was a, that was tornado a good, in a trailer park. That was a good one. That was another good example of kind of what we were talking about before with the this whole is a, no, action This is another movie. Siberia level. No, like, like, what would forward. be a compelling moment where the tornado was... What would be cool? Oh, it'd be cool to be in a tornado. Where would be a good location to have a tornado? How about a trailer park? <laughs> <laughs> that is significant. Nathan, did you see uh, the music? Ah, memories. <laughs> Sergeant Sprunk. Excellent. We'll be the one thank after you, Siberia. Thank you, Cyanide. You can thank Nathan and Brian for your old sound as well. BAFTA awesome. award winning Nathan Craig. Nominated. <laughs> nominated, that's it. Nominated. Yeah, BAFTA nominated. 
nominated great. Which is actually well, a lot of ways better. Things, it's yeah. a lot of lot, way, lot of ways better to be nominated, not win. Yes. Because then you're like you're you're not all cocky. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're still getting. Yeah. You're still driven. You're still ambitious. You're yeah. still the clubber lane composers. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Matt Paul isn't working for me. Still anymore. a starving artist. Yeah. <laughs> That's a dynamite gun, by the way. Ford so looks. 60s futuristic, almost like a laser pistol. <laughs> Somebody's mad that we're scared. I, I know, but we're not. Like, Sorry. I've seen this porno before, okay? Is this the Antarctic one? I thought, is there a cheat where we can turn guys into man crates? I thought there was a cheat where we could do that. Oh. I don't think it's still later, though. No, I thought we. I thought there was a key that would like let you. That'd be amazing. I thought there was. Ooh. Have you seen the man crates? No. Yeah, I, oh, I, I. They sound amazing. I really want to see them. I'm trying realizing that I don't think I've ever played all the way through this. No, no two. Somebody's upset. Tell me what to stop. What, what are they upset about? I don't know. What is he doing? More map holes. <laughs> we don't know what he's doing either. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm a loose cannon. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I had somebody, to give. I'll have somebody's to like, this page. is not what I signed up for. Uh -oh. <laughs> I wanted to watch a full playthrough. <laughs> from the beginning to end. I'm spotting if you show go interface sounds for I know. Some I saw reason. that. I was like, mm, mm. not cool, Adrenalinta. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, yeah, Brian. Why are you reusing sounds? What's going on? It's before me. Yes, yeah, man, party. It is a teleport game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this was one, like, one slow teleport. This was Portal before Portal. Right. Look at this. All it takes is writing map hole. I see what you're doing there. I can shoot Join some things. Join it in. I just want to. I just want to discover what this you if man crate is. Too, right? right. Is that how it works. It is how it works. <laughs> just so curious about man crate. But now. Now where are you? We do like one more. I don't know. I feel like we should. We I'm should time traveling, and I'm gonna like lose track of where I am. Man, there are so many Siberia levels. Yeah, wow. Siberia was. We wanted to feel like Siberia. Yeah. <laughs> like endless. You're still in Siberia. <laughs> There's a bear trap. Bear trap. So like. Well, let's just see if we can get the bear it trap was destroyed. The prevalent James Bond movie. Yeah. No one cheats forever. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that movie. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, I killed one guy. Now I'm free to teleport again. Wait, uh, when are we giving somebody? away box two? <laughs> no, I'm just... I think we should give away box two. Yeah, this is a good opportunity yeah, you to You had a great trivia, by the way. Be thinking of a trivia question. It's 3.26, our time, Pacific time chat. So in four minutes... Oh, boy. Yes, you have four minutes, though. That's plenty of time. To think, we, we, should have, Brian, we should have one of the, the ex monolith guys on here, like yeah. Jim or... Or uh, Vivian, or mm -hmm. Brian, if he's still on. Brian's right here. Do you want to? <laughs> no, uh, be long. Yeah. You guys have uh, one of the guys on the stream. Do one of you guys have a good trivia question? <laughs> What's that? Don't listen to that. Hey, third player. I'm glad you made it. Um, yeah. Who wants to do the trivia question? I'm just excited to give away a box. Hey, Vivian. Do you have? Do you have a? A question? Do you have a good one? <laughs> I like shooting a person and he says, ow, that hurts. It belongs in a museum. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All of my trivia questions are about engine tools. There you go. <laughs> maybe like three people out here who could even have, even have, yeah. Uh, what's the monkey in No One? Yeah, No One was the monkey. How much, How much was, was the monkey? monkey? Oh, oh, because he's trying to. Sell. Actually, no, I got, I got a good trivia question. Good I got a good trivia question. All right. Uh, the quote about the monkey in Nolf, Nolf One. What is yes. the quote? That's people just look it up. No, no, no. Actually, people have been talking about it. Yeah, I think people have said that. Talking about it. Hey, Jamie Blaze. How people you doing? misquote it all the time. People yeah, misquote it. We can go grab it. Worst case. Oh, actually, you Tell know what? Jerry has that keyed up and ready to go. This is great. Oh, look. Who do we got? That's Cyanide wrong. Cyanide Blizzard. That's wrong? That's wrong. It's after. That one's right. Which one? That one. Swift yep. Swim. That one. You look like you need a monkey. You a, look like you need like, a monkey. You look like you need a It was, it was a perfectly... No! There you go. Oh, hey, we got it. Monkey. I don't want your damn monkey. That's, that's <laughs> a uh, I hope you saved We got to the trailer park level. I, I hope you saved the... 
that spot though. Oh, it is. Oh, we'll see. We'll not, see. It may not know that. Right. You've map you hold all that way forward. Case, yeah. See, you're not supposed to map hold that much. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a crash. That was done on purpose. Oh, right, right. It's yeah. just like no, you're not allowed to. That's like you're not it's playing a balance the game issue. the way we intended. So <laughs> you have to stop. Yeah. Everybody's clearing that hole. Only twenty American dollars. <laughs> oh, who, who typed it first? I don't know, Kevin. Did you? We see haven't it? recorded. It's recorded. It's it's recorded. So oh, load a game. It was load the game. Swim. Load the, the game. The reason why yeah, we know is you guys are going to sign this. Try to see if there's something out there. Oh man, inner yard. Well, that's not oh, too no. far out, right? It's certainly in Siberia. It is Siberia, but we've got cyanide says Twinka plays was first. Got a map hole a few times. Is that, is that what we believe? Twinka plays was first. Uh, it was. That's somebody with an S. I thought it was somebody else. I think you got one more. All right, all right. We're going to find out because we have to know because we then can we're going to screenshot it. You can oh. scroll up. Scroll up. I'm wrong. I can, more. I can scroll up if need be. Yes. You're like Mix Master J over there. Oh, yeah, you're doing both. It, do, it's playing and scrolling. <laughs> scrolling up. Oh, we right there. So many Siberia levels. There you go. It was... Uh, you look like you need a monkey. It was swim. swims... Oh, oh wait! Swim to, uh, I see what they're saying. Toy Oh no no, it was. It wait, was Toy yeah. Place. Go, go higher. Is that the one? I think it might have been Toy Yeah. Window. Keep going up. Yeah. Cyanide. Yep, that was it. On the spot. Oh, wait, as usual. Here's 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 the first. Yeah. Uh, so it's, here's the first. Like just toy man, man crate time. Man crate. Oh man crate. There's the man. The man handler. I forgot about that. <laughs> There's Terrence over on the right or between the. Oh, that makes 14, Mr. Mr. Terrence man. Do you feel better yet? Terrence is my man. Terrence moving too. Terrence Loggins. He's the best. Bring in Laramie. That's, how much Bring of that was, like, just pure, like, <laughs> Scott Alba? <laughs> I beg you. Feed him into the machine. <laughs> Feed Scott, him into the I'm machine. Well, it could come down. This got to be the man crate. Is that the music? <laughs> yeah, what's what music? <laughs> tell us, <laughs> tell <laughs> What is this? It's man crate. Then if you look at their eyes, <laughs> their eyes. Uh, <laughs> hey, then, what was that music? Was that, like, a... F a carnival song? That was uh, that was one of Guy Guy Whitmore's pieces actually. He Good. did some of, he did some of the um, he did some of the cinematic music in this game. Um, ah. We sort of split it uh, half and half. I did all the gameplay music, but I had him help me with some of the cinematics. We were kind of working with this in parallel with Tron too, and um, he did a couple of game levels in Tron. Um, so. How many games were you working on when this was coming about? Um. But generally, we, we always had one. We always had one, one really spotlight play. one, but then we usually had maybe two other ones that were kind of going. So one would be like in pre-pro, and the other one would be sort of part of the way through. So there was that one point when it was Fear, Condemn, and Matrix all the same. Wow. Right. We, 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 all we shipped them all in Remember 2005. Like, yeah. yeah. It, was in, it was intense. That's a piece of gaming history. I was talking to Kevin about that. That's actually in our um, Wikipedia. And bring back proof this time. Oh, really? The year that we, that I say we. <laughs> you, you guys shipped, shipped all three games. That that was a that was, that was an epic that. We year. We were hoping for something a little more conclusive. I feel like you guys are probably the only what ones that actually this worked on all three games. Because mm -hmm. you guys mm -hmm. did music for all three. Competent. I remember we were bouncing between. We were bouncing between all of them. I mean, somebody, all somebody all might have jumped around, but I'm sure. Yeah. Means you didn't kick their butts hard. Yeah, man, Manhandler had some had some interesting themes to it. Not just on the soundtrack level, but then there's a. There's a presentation of the manhandler that happens later. Um, I don't want to spoil it though, because you guys are probably going to get to it. Where, um, <laughs> you know, but I, I can't believe you remember this. I, had to, I actually had to write. I had to write a game show theme for it. It was hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember that. It was that. really fun. <laughs> I bet that would be a lot. Of it was. It was great. It was yeah, a totally legit weird. sounding game show. It sounded just Ohio. hilarious. I don't feel bad for the man crates either. Such I agree. <laughs> <laughs> they, apparently they come back. So. Come back and bug the heck out so Toyka plays. Are you still? with us because we have some exciting questions for you book of plays yeah so i won was the question for so do you want it signed by the guys here or would you like to just have it regular old pristine please don't yes all right here we go where where yes this is the best this is real time where do you want it signed you want it signed on the front the inside, the inside. The back the sides back. this is live entertainment signed but right, he's, but he's 15 seconds there's 15 seconds behind us so. Oh, <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> right, so what's the answer? Inside. Fourteen seconds to comply. That way he Inside. knows that he called it. The other one was signed on the outside. Inside. 
Uh, now we'll actually know too who's who's. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. It'll help you. The house where Melvin used to live. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, this this is I like this level. All right, so someone's told me to say bada boom. Uh, what was supposed to happen with that uh, cheat code? Oh, I've been tricked. No, that's Sorry. that feels like a cheat code to me. I don't remember what it is. It might be like. <laughs> Poster. Oh, DX wants to know if we're going to do a Condemned anniversary stream. Hells yeah, we are. Uh, Condemned is actually November 22nd. Yeah. So we're... Uh, you go to that poster, that's going to be Jared, the 14th that anniversary, too. We'll I'll get FMA right in here for that one. Did you guys work on Condemned? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So oh, Ryan and is, the, you know, really heavy sound designer on that was because there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of the condemned lead on that no guys still here. that's yeah. awesome we're yeah. doing condemned on november 22nd that's 13th great. anniversary that's great so all that's right awesome. you heard it yeah here we go folks. Oh, 13's nice right that's always the best anniversary <laughs> i think for a creepy to, game i'd be happy to talk about the condemned games those are those are really fun i'm gonna yeah. leave this yeah. open so it, i feel like i know the glossy that's yeah, the, the only thing is gonna is gonna we gotta get the guys on the stream to come in and sign this too. Oh, no, yeah. light bulbs work. Did they work on Condemned? Um, let's see. Um, Francis did. Francis did. Um, who else? Jim, I don't. Was Jim? Jim, I don't think did. Did everybody kind of. Belong, Belong was gone. I think Francis, yeah. That was yeah. with a whole, a whole other. I gotta come to his place. I'm not coming to your place. <laughs> Oh, Pinbinder says... You gotta come to my place. Worked on Condemned. That's cool, so there's a freestanding offer, yeah, that we are gonna um, do a stream, maybe. I would love it, calling all Bad monolith food. vets. That would be pretty fun. Yeah, we should we should try to get everybody to come in, do a reunion, That'd and then, cool. <laughs> then we could, and then you guys could say, okay, we have all this stuff coming up, sign all this stuff, please. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would, all right, we can do that. I know Kristen's been good at, like, just pinching off a couple of boxes here and there. From the storage closet. <clears throat> Gosh, this house looks good. Yeah. <laughs> it looks really it, good. It, yeah. It's. Oh, yeah, it is surprising how. Like, look at, how look. <laughs> it looks good. I love that you, you guys are like, this is still a really Well, wow. it was just, we, we changed technologies after this. We went, because this is all like First light person. maps. We went, right. to, uh, we went to the per pixel lighting. And I think, I don't know, sometimes I wonder if we would have stayed with in this direction, just kind of where we would have ended up. It is pretty fun to see, like, for 2002. Especially. What's crazy is, I swear it has more detail than, like, Fear. When we were playing Fear, honestly. It does. It does. Because there's more, there's, I mean, it has, because there's more, color. there's more, yeah, <laughs> color, right? basically. <laughs> yeah, because, in I mean, in Fear, it's all... It's, it's all dynamically lit, uh, yeah. so we couldn't have as many lights. And here, with the lights were baked in, so you could have a lot more detail. Basically, I mean, it's simplifying. But so for the people at home, what is dynamic versus baked in? So I, it's just that it means that every light in fear, we could move the lights in real time, and, it, and everything would change. All the shadows, everything would change. And here, it's all it's it's baked in. So if if um, so basically, the the lighting is baked into the texture, so it's not well. It's like a consistent source, yeah. right? It'd be a lot easier if uh, Pin Vendor wasn't on here because he's like, yeah, he got that wrong. He got that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pin Vendor should do it. You you should you should talk about the <laughs> the, the graphics. I didn't work on it. Fun fact: Letting of Fear and Condemned also works on DX8 hardware. Fear is a very blue game. I'd say gray. <laughs> Uh, grayish blue, cut kind of the middle. Really like turning on lights. Is it like and turning off lights with bullets. Light baked in means that the lighty, the values in the source basically are all. Well, in here it's like so. There's there's the texture, mm -hmm. and then there's basically the lighting information, and mm -hmm. so and in here when you're turning on and off lights, that means there's two sets. Mm -hmm. There's the dark version and the mm -hmm. light version, and so. Um, in fear, basically, the the light is is in real time is calculating mm -hmm. what that looks like. So then you can have great dynamic lights Which, moving all around. Yeah. But they're really expensive because it's doing each pixel is getting the light value mm. in real time. That's why it's per pixel lighting. Um, is so, that's how you guys played so much with shadows and yeah. stuff like that in the game. Yeah, because the, the tech really supported that. 
But I mean, we even now even we run into some limitations with the you know kind of the dynamic lighting versus the static lighting. That's really a better way to say it: dynamic versus static. That's a concept that Jared and I have been talking about before. That that sometimes a lot I think of people there's something that in the fridge, Jared, too. The, the fridge? fridge? That, that people there, that, that, that aren't necessarily in there. In the process of creating <laughs> games, when you talk about <laughs> expensive, you talk about like the, the processor cost, right? There's like how fridge. much? Yeah. There was so a pin bender said. So pin bender knows. He he worked on it. So he should explain it better than me. <laughs> or quick understanding for those at home. When we say expensive, we're referring to uh, RAM. Like so, it's like it takes a certain amount of memory to have the lighting that's dynamic, and so you can have less things, like less animations, less sounds, less everything. If yeah. you have the well, dynamic it's not a dynamic budget. versus stack. It's memory and it's the GPU. And, and the there's, GPU. A, there's a lot of different factors. Gotcha. Um, but I mean, the thing is, it's like now it's like rendering is totally different now, just because it's it's you know the hardware back then <laughs> is you know but I don't know, you know two three orders of magnitudes less powerful. What, what's the most expensive thing in total generality uh, today? Like in modern gaming, it's FX AI. Probably still so, rendering. Still rendering. Yeah. But well, but it's GPU versus CPU usually. It de it just depends on if you if you want to have a stream talking about that you got to bring in the engineers <laughs> not me <laughs> I haven't written code in a long time fair enough we will yeah actually I, we're always trying to get Matt in here he's a Matt and yeah Matt would be good too but you can get Jared Jared would be a good one or Peter different oh, Jared for those at home. Yeah. Okay. No, in your spare time, is that what you're doing? Yeah, Jared, I'm, I'm also, also an engineer in my engineer spare time. Engineer slash speaker. Uh, I'm the other one. <laughs> All right, so now what are we doing? I'm looking for batteries. This is so much like a living normal life right now. I'm like, God, where did I put the batteries? <laughs> where did I, put them? I can't find it in the kitchen. See, we did Home Alone first. <laughs> what is this like? I've checked all the drawers. I've checked all uh, so I need to put batteries in the downstairs, like, whatever this thing is. You know, I'll, I'll bring it up again to see if it jogs anyone's memory. But basically, we have this thing, and I pulled a, a poster off the wall, and then it's like, press the button. Works. Won't work without batteries. So, yeah, the batteries aren't going to be down here, I don't think. I think the batteries are upstairs somewhere. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be down here. I'm going to do a final check again, just so I don't have to come back down here after. Well, you do have to come back down here anyway. I guess that's true. All right, I'm back, back up, up the stairs. stairs. I'm, I'm gonna rephrase um, Steven's question is more general, but what's kind of the difference between working on IP that's licensed versus like the projects that we've done in the past? Pros, cons? Well, I mean, it's, I think at the highest level, the, the thing that's nice about working on established IP is that um, there's a framework that the whole team, especially as the teams get bigger, there's a framework that people understand. It's like, you know, everybody knows, like, for Middle Earth, it's like, every, you know, you can go watch The Lord of the Rings. Even if you never don't know anything about Middle Earth, you can say, here, go, you know, spend 13 hours watching these movies or whatever. Sort of a and, direction. And everybody and, has a common language. And everybody has a common language, yeah, so everybody with. understands. Right. Um, the downside, well, there's two, a couple downsides. One downside is that you have more um, constraints. On the, and both constraints that are real constraints, like the IP holders say, no, you can't add you know, a lightsaber to Lord of the Rings. That right. doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. But um, you also have constraints that aren't maybe license holder constraints that are fan constraints of like, no, we don't like that Chilab is a woman. You mm -hmm. know? like, so, and a lot of the, those constraints you don't really know about until after the fact. Yeah. Um, and so, so there are pros and cons. And obviously an original IP, you can, I mean, Nulf is a really good example of original IP where you can just do whatever you want. Like, we did crazy, I mean, man crates. We, just, we added man crates because we thought it was cool. We didn't need to, like, get we didn't approval have have on Nobody's that. Nobody's approval. Like, like, no one said, that, those, aren't, those aren't on brand, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> did, pretty did you much. Did you mean man swine? Yeah, 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 exactly. So, yeah, I mean. So, but, yeah. but the, the thing that, so everybody would go, oh, you always want to do original IP. And it's like, yeah, but the problem is, how do you make it cohesive mm -hmm. when anything could be in it? Right. And it becomes, it can become arbitrary if you don't. So you have to put your own constraints on the IP. You have to have somebody that is, you know, the vision holder and, you know, can say this is in, that is, that is out. And then, and a lot of times the problem is when it's, you know, when it's an established IP that everybody knows, it's, 
people don't really argue with it. Mm-hmm. They go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Why would we put that in there? But when it's an IP that you know Bob or Joe right. down the hall, you know, said no, that doesn't fit, then it becomes a lot more like, well, who are you to say? Right, like, right. I'm building this game too. Right. Like, why why can't I have a bigger say in it? So right. you can get more infighting. Um, we didn't have a lot of that on No One's Forever, though. And, and actually, to be honest, the older Monolith games, I think that the reason we had a lot less infighting is because the teams were a lot smaller. Yeah. Because, so you, could, you wouldn't end up with factions. Right, like, right, as the right. teams get bigger, you know, instead of being one person that disagrees, now you get that person that has like five of his friends. Right. And so now you get these little cliques of people that disagree, and it just, you know, it's yeah. like society. <laughs> you know? It's like, I'm just describing the problem with society, basically. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot like the film. Uh, Sharks and the Jets. When you see the two people coming up to each other and snapping, that's uh, that's monolith disagreement. With yeah, them. we just we always just we have to sing it out. Yeah, <laughs> we 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 uh, you know I, I love working on original IPs. Um, I I will have to say as well that when we've done licensed IPs, they've all been really good ones in the yeah. sense that they've all been really fun. You know, we've never been shackled with an IP where it's just sort of like oh you know I've never I've never. Have have had have ever had a situation um, on any any title where it's like oh I have to you know I have to do this now there's never been that which has been really uh, really fortunate been in these times. yeah that's yeah. that's actually a really good point yeah. Yeah. I, which I kind of take <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I mean I just right. think about it. it's like we've yeah. worked with some of the best IPs there are right I mean mm. there are, in terms of just creating a game in, the, in that space for those I mean they're they're all very inspiring yeah um, so it's it's we're, we're very very lucky. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well said. I have to say that the, one of my favorite, favorite sounds from first in Mordor and then Shadow of War, I'm sure this is something you guys created, was the uh, the combo, the boom, 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 that was something I, I uh, the, uh, worked on. That's the, the, the flurry. Yes. Yeah. Flurry. Yeah. That is one of yeah. the coolest fucking sounds. Because you want to finish it. You have this need on a right. primal level to hear the end it of it. It just feels like, natural that you're like, right. get to the end. Yeah. 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 And then there's the, there's the head explode, you know, ending yeah. that actually caps it. You know, yeah. which is once you get that, get that skill, it's, yeah, it pays off. What are yeah. you doing, Jared? I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, listening. I'm proud of that, how that oh. came out. I was also starting to make some scrambled eggs, you know. It's, it's a kitchen. It was. It felt like a real perfect marriage between game mechanic and sound. Where yeah. it was, with the sound perfectly complemented and compelled you to finish that what the mechanic was. Right, right. Well, did, did you pr- to... did you push the garage door button? Uh, I must have. And then I went downstairs and I grabbed a gun. Was there? Did you? Did a room open up? Yes. Okay, I missed. And that. then I, I've killed everybody this after is... the room scene. Uh, okay. You gotta Sorry, jump. I just missed that part. You yeah. want this, this room? You went yeah, yeah. Upstairs where Don't the you go upstairs and jump out? Oh, that's thing. how you get out? Okay. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was the problem I was running into. I think there's sometimes. You do something, I remember you jump. We've been in this house a really long time. I'm getting stir crazy being in this house. <laughs> yeah. No. By like, the way, I'm just getting really used to looking at all the beautiful I, art and the I, graphics. I, I blew my joke earlier. I meant to say we did gone home before. Oh, wait, look behind you. Yeah. You, got, you got a window, I'm pretty sure. I think you go. No, where's nope. that little attic? Yeah. I don't think it's. I love having like you guys walking me through this because this is the the creators. Don't feel as bad when it's not just me struggling. Oh, Oh, there you go. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Do we? Kevin Deadman Party was asking, is it is it expensive to make a a game like Shadow of War Mortar? But obviously, WB owns the license. Is that do they, is there a chargeback on that, or is this like we just do that? Wait, right? what's, what was the question? Dead Man Party said, "Curious, but licenses to make a game like Shadow of War, Mortar, were they expensive? Basically, tornado. Uh, well, I mean, we can't really, I can't oh, really sorry. get into the finances of it, but I mean, you know, I mean, they're yeah, the best licenses in the world. I mean, you know, the, you're gonna pay for That's them. Skybox. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. there you go. So yes, I, I would say expensive. I'd say they, the value is worth it, but it costs you money to." to get them. I don't know. I don't know how else politically to say that. That, That's that's perfectly fine. Especially because we've got a tornado on the horizon. Oh my god. Check out the tornado! Uh, That's extraordinary. Can I search the bird? You are have a ninja fight (laughs) in a tornado. tornado. And it's coming. And they're throwing shurikens. Yeah. Uh, I really, I really. I will take out my swords. We should have, we should have done motorcycles and had them be on fire. Then we would have had everything, right? <laughs> Tornado, just, ninjas, motorcycles, fire. Seriously, I'm a big fan of the shaking. Uh, oh, oh, poles, oh, like light poles, yeah, or electrical poles. I think that's Wait really cool. The tornado oh my comes gosh. in. Gosh. 
just so much imagination. Anybody have any mails? Anybody there you know? Oh, go back. Yeah, go back and look at the names. uh, Most likely there's names on there. Runnels, yep. Sasha. Sasha. Steve Lee, S. Lee. Yep. I don't know. Davis. Davis. (laughs) (laughs) An inside joke, perhaps? Uh, Was there a Davis? I don't remember. There might have been somebody, I just don't remember. Uh, I love the the target role. We started seeing that. Did Sh- I don't remember if Shogo had the role, but we started seeing it a lot in uh, later uh, auto games. Some great mofos. <laughs> <laughs> They're ninjas. They gotta, know, they gotta do their acrobatics. <laughs> 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 they can't just fight you. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you doing? That's not what, that's what, nin- that's not what ninjas do. What are you this is not the right Dude, way. What are you doing? I wanted to see if that was you walked past that. I think in a lightning storm, having a sword held aloft is. The I don't best. know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> don't you have any guns? I don't have any more guns. Oh, she blocked you. I'm, this is. This I'm is um, Somebody made the joke earlier that there's ninjas keep spawning in this like Daredevil season two, <laughs> which was a pretty good insight if you guys ever saw Daredevil. We did it first. We did it. First. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're supposed to. The stream's going to end at four. It is currently three fifty. Oh wow. Uh oh. So, so we've given away. We've given away our boxes. We've given away our boxes to oh, those. What? The, Look at that! Look at that crazy shit! Look at that, that crazy shit! That floats just, down. That. Loading ninja. That is a pretty badass digit. Let's so that was on purpose. For the two people who won, um, go ahead and uh, send us a message on Monolith yeah, Live just to make it so that we can like talk to you about addresses and like how to get it to you and that kind of thing. That would be very helpful. Thank you. All right. So how do I get past this? I feel like you have to go, go around. Climb over the fence over yeah, there. Yeah, just go around. Right through. Yeah. I think you can go through one of the houses or something. Yeah. yeah. Climb over the, the fence. Oh, yeah, right there. Just jump over that fence there in the front yard. Yeah, go there. Can you? No. Oh, can you go on the, the other side? A ladder. Oh, that was a neat idea. What about that door? Yeah. This is the ladder is a no. Did you try going around the other way? I have yet to. So I'm going to that shot. Oh, is, I, summon there's, a, there's a run somewhere. Gonna, I gotta find the, the run button real can quick. Can you summon a drake? I don't remember. Just, yeah, summon a drake. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Shadow strike over to the... Action. Like it's like Lego Dimensions, only with all the monolith types. So, yeah. also, also, though, Jerry, we can tell these fine folk that we will be doing the Condemned 13th anniversary. That's on November 22nd. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, we're going to be doing the stream. We get nice and scared. Yeah, we get nice and scared again after we've had this nice impish 60s romp. We're going to go back into the terror, really the terror field. Well, you're not yeah. searching any of them. That's one of the reasons you don't have any... Shit. Oh, they That's why you're dis- not getting stuff. They, they keep disappearing. Well, it's because you... They normally, sh- like, <laughs> maintain, but these ones keep disappearing. Well, that's because you, like, need to search, tornado. search, search. Well, it's, I think it's actually that you guys are trying to encourage me to go faster because there's a tornado <laughs> coming. Like, you literally <laughs> have a couch of convincing. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, go that way. Go this way. Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much for everybody showing up. This yeah. has been a lot of yeah. fun. I think I'll, I'll switch it to yeah, the, thanks, the full guys. screen of you guys. Thanks a lot. You can do your goodbyes. With uh, the, the cape yeah, just over Nathan's head. Yeah? <laughs> so I pushed off the screen. <laughs> kind of like, uh, it was like Brian, Nathan, <laughs> Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you, guys. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you, everybody, for hanging out and chatting. Yeah. It was a joy to have you guys here. Yes. Thanks for showing up. Yeah, yeah. All right, see you. Let's do the waves. Bye. Bye. <laughs>